Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside Ortmeyer Stadium for a little bit of Saturday afternoon college football. The hometown University of Laverne Leopards hosting the visiting Pomona Pitzer Sachens here at the University of Laverne. I'm Nate Rodriguez alongside Cesar Rivas bringing you today's action. A great look at the crowd there honoring the American flag as we wrap up the national anthem. The Sagehens coming into today's game, an overall record of three and three, taking on fellow Sun opponent, the Laverne Leopards, an overall record of one and five, still searching for that first conference win. A Sun Division matchup. Caesar, players to watch today, beginning with the Leopards. Yeah, you know, number 84, Jimmy Rumsey, the true freshman wide receiver, with, comes into the game with 27 receptions. And the other true freshman, number one, Juan Gutierrez, the other wide receiver slot back, comes into the game with 13 receptions. Number 26, Jonathan Burris is a two-headed monster back in the backfield. Another one of two true freshman running backs comes into the game with 41 attempts, averaging just about three yards a carry. With number 22, Mason Uribe, another true freshman, 17 attempts, a little over 3.6 yards per carry. And I know Nick Garcia, you see here, not suited up today for the Leopards, suffered, a, suffered an injury last week uh, in the homecoming game against CMS, but a couple more players to watch on defense for the Leopards, Caesar. Well, you know, the defense is really led by their linebacking crew, starting with number 43, Aiden Clinton. Uh, leads the team right now with 37 tackles and an interception, but you have a real safety back there, number eight, Chase Yanez, uh, playing multiple different positions in the secondary. And the Pomona Pitzer Seychens offense has a lot of guys playing a couple different positions, beginning with this guy right here, Matthias Olsen. He's number, he's, he's number zero, comes into the game with 17 receptions. He's a really a dual threat guy uh, with averaging just about 24 yards per reception right now. Number 12, Sander Wimmer. Again, another dual threat, threat uh, player for the Sagehens. Comes into the game with 34 receptions with just about a little over 10 yards per, per reception right now. Here. Number 12, Sander Wimmer. Again, relation. I, I know we like to say no relation sometimes, but there is a relation. 34, 34 attempts, uh, 3.7 yards per carry right now uh, for Sander. And number 16, Grady Russo. He's got six. 16 attempts right now, again, averaging just about 4.8 an attempt. Quarterback Ethan, number three, Ethan Grenzinger, the quarterback, comes into the game with 84 completions on 137 attempts, five picks to his nine touchdowns. But really, this, this defensive crew is pretty solid. Number 54, Thomas McConnell, the linebacker, and number 17, Tanner Gomes, the safety, uh, racking it up with a little over 70, just about 70 tackles between the two of them. Thank you, Caesar. The players to watch for both sides certainly set to impact this game. The Leopards coming out in their green jerseys today, taking on Pomona Pitzer, who's yet to come out from the tunnel. As a matter of fact, here they come wearing white. The Leopards and Sage has set to square off from Ortmeyer Stadium, kickoff. In just about five minutes, we're still awaiting the scoreboard here at Ortmeyer Stadium to function. Looks like we've got some technical difficulties in the public address announcing box. Like they say, right, technology's amazing up until you really need it, right? Yep, absolutely. Five minutes till kickoff, and we're still minus the scoreboard. But the Sagehens and Leopards are going to kick off in five minutes. Whether we got one going or not, the officiating crew set and ready to keep track of time on the field. Might be harder for us to relay that to you at home if you're watching, but we'll give it our best shot. Leopards and Sagehens coming up in just a few minutes. Sagehens led by head coach John Walsh and the Leopards led by head coach Chris Creek. These Leopards still searching for their first Skyac win, Caesar. They scored 17 points against a tough CMS opponent last week. Their passing offense certainly looks to kind of get going. What can we expect from them this week? Well, you know, what, what you're going to try to see is the Leopards probably try to establish a ground game. Again, they've got two young kids back there that they're handing the football off to. They were just starting to feel like the passing game was starting to get some legs. Uh, but again, losing your starting quarterback in that last most productive game through the air. Uh, again, two young guys in the backfield 
complemented by a true freshman in Rumsey uh, with a junior, Ramos Kamaka, really being the, the two-headed monster at the receiving positions. But again, what I can see is if we're going to have number quarterback two, three, and four in the ball game for the Leopards, I could see the offensive coordinator, Tom Martinez, and quarterbacks coach, John Roberts, really trying to establish the run game early right now. Uh, give the quarterback some breathing room, give them, give them a little opportunity to get the nerves under themselves, and then try to open that thing up as the game progresses with their one and two punch between uh, Rumsey and Ramos Kamaka. You hear there the white cap announcing that Pomona Pitzer wins the coin toss. They elect to defer to the second half. Laverne will receive the opening kickoff here in just a couple of minutes. As Caesar mentioned, Nick Garcia, the QB1 for ULV going down last week with an injury. But however, the Leopards getting their second and third string quarterbacks today, Andre Maldonado and Trevor Tedesco. Likely to perhaps see a couple of snaps themselves alongside number 14, Jonathan Martin. And what was really nice to see last week is Jonathan Martin's first play from scrimmage last night, or excuse me, last week, was a fourth and long. And the poor guy got kind of fed to the wolves on that because everybody in the, uh, in the stadium knew on homecoming that they were blitzing and bringing everybody. He got himself sacked on the very first play on fourth down. But he came back and, and really put a nice showing together in the back end of that fourth quarter to bring the Leopards within touching distance of CMS. And that's really what you're looking for today. You're just looking for growth. Really young ball team over here with the Leopards. A lot of progress they've made over the last couple weeks. Um, again, hit a speed bump there at Kowloon with the big disparity in points. But really seeing them at homecoming last week start to make some real positive gains on the offensive side of the ball. And with growth comes growing pains. The Leopards in search of their first Skyak win. Number 36, Cameron Sharangi, the senior kicking off for Pomona Pitzer. It'll be a touchback, and the Leopards will take over first. And wait in anticipation right now. There's probably about 50 guys in that offensive huddle right now for the Leopards. So along with you and I and the crowd, everybody's kind of wondering who's going to come on out and take the first snap under center. Trying to get a look at which quarterback it will be for the Leopards. They got three of them to choose from. Looks like you might have the better look. Trevor yeah, Tedesco looks, Trevor looks Tedesco. like the sophomore from Altaloma. Tedesco ready to get things going for the Leopards. And again, like any time you're struggling as a team, a lot of it has to do with continuity and consistency, but a lot of that has to do with injuries. And towards this time of the year, the, the teams that are rising to the top tend to be the healthiest ones, and everybody's banged up to a certain degree when you're reaching week six, seven, and eight of the season. But, you know, the Leopards has kind of been through it over the last month or so, last four weeks or so, and, and it's nice to see number two, Trevor Tedesco, actually suiting up for the first time in a while. Tedesco playing in his fourth game this season. Had been banged up the last few weeks. He completes his first pass to John Burris, but Burris is swallowed up almost immediately. And you can see that's just really an extended toss play out there. That bubble pass, that swing pass to the tailback, just an extended uh, long outside zone run or outside toss. Uh, so again, more of a controlled passing game to, to take the place of maybe just truly just handing the football off, but it's really doing kind of the same thing. Tedesco comes into this game only 5 for 16 on the year, completing passes at just over 31%, a handoff, and the Leopards are able to pick up some yardage. And in talking to the offensive staff a couple weeks ago, there's been a big shift in how they're blocking up front right now. And so what you're going to try to see in that inside zone is, is, again, you have a lot of young freshmen, a lot of new players. They hit the injury bug with the O-line. So they're trying to work on some of those double teams uh, to give the old adage three, three, four yards in a cloud of dust some, some definite meaning right now uh, in this ball game today. John Burris on that last carry. So Burris getting the first two plays for the Leopards. Third down for ULV, Tedesco over the middle, caught by number 11, that was Julian Martinez, wrapped up by a couple of Sage Hens and down. And big number 11 is really a bright spot for uh, the ULV Leopards. I know Julian Martinez is a tall drink of water. You see him out there usually heads and shoulders ab above many other guys. Uh, he's a sophomore from Big Bear High School, uh, up just right up the mountain, and they're trying to get him involved some fashion or way in their last win against Pomona, or excuse me, against um, 
against Puget Sound. He had a huge third down conversion. They'd like to get him involved today. Freshman Sean Garvey punting for the Leopards. Punt and fielded by Duncan Lee. A fair catch. Ball is down just short of the 30. And Duncan Lee sitting back there shaking his head going, son of a gun, I probably should have not waved fair catch. And there was quite a bit of green real estate out in front of him. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry when you're the punt returner. Again, the number one priority is fielding the ball, making sure your offense actually gets the ball back and can line up on first and ten like they're doing right now. So the Seychens have a variety of options to choose from as well at the quarterback position. It looks like it'll be... Sonder Wimmer out to take the first snap for Pomona Pitzer. It's low. Wimmer able to recover it, but the Leopards are going to have a sack on their first defensive play. And that's what you need to start off the ball game if you're the Laverne Leopards. Need some sort of big play to try to spark some sort of momentum to get this defense going. This is proven to be a very momentum momentum uh, based defense when they make some big plays it really tends to start to snowball for them in a positive way so an error on the first snap Sonder Wimmer will carry the next play he's brought down around the line of scrimmage but a flag was thrown early now, I don't know about you, Nate, but Sonder Wimmer's listed at 6'2", 195, and from where we're standing, when he started running the football downhill, he looked a lot like the quarterback from CMS last week, which was listed at about 6'5". Yeah, that's Camp, Walter Camp from Greensboro, North Carolina. Simmer, certainly a big-bodied big -bodied student athlete, getting downhill quickly. You can see him coming over, trying to get the play from the Sage Hens. Illegal formation, too many men in the backfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. From the Sage Hens coaching staff, five-yard penalty against Pomona Pitzer has the Sage Hens in trouble on their opening drive. And I'll, I'll define that a little bit more, is that you need seven men on the line of scrimmage on any given play. So that's what the penalty was on the Pomona Pitzer offense on that given play. Simmer from Hollis, New Hampshire. Takes the snap, drops back. He's looking right, but he's got no option. Able to dodge a tackle. He misses. Ball is nearly picked. Instead, it's tipped and into the hands of the Sage Hens. A rough start for Pomona Pitzer, dodging a big bullet there. Still losing plenty of yardage. Oh, and I'll tell you, I'll go, I dare you to do that twice, Nate where that ball, he's running around, he misses. He, there's a couple missed sacks on that given play. He makes an outstanding athletic play. Throws the ball, what quarterback coaches say is the death of a quarterback. Never throw the ball late and over the middle of the field. And it almost proved to be a pick by Oscar Montenegro, number 28 for the Leos, but instead it was caught by a receiver for the Sage Hens and turns into positive yardage. So Simmer able to thankfully connect to an option. He's got another one over the middle. A beautiful catch there by the Sage Hens number 20, Quinton Wimmer. And I'll tell you, number 12, Sander Wimmer stood in and took a hit and delivered that ball on a dime. If he holds on to, the, holds on to that ball just .2 seconds longer, it's a sack for the Leos. Instead, it's a first down for the Sage Hens. So Sander tells his brother Quinton, hey bro, we need a first down. Makes the connection over the middle. Now Sander carrying it himself, picking up about five yards on the carry. And if you're wondering how in the world the quarterback has all these yards, it's because he's running and throwing the ball. He is definitely a dual threat quarterback right now. He's a big body uh, fella back there. They're putting the hand down in the ground with the offensive line and saying, let's get north and south. Let big number 12 run behind you. Second down and about five for the Sage Hens. Ball is spotted just short of midfield. Sage Hens will carry it, pick up the first down and more, but there's a flag on the play. And that was just your old-fashioned power run game right there. Not a true RPO, even though they're running it out of the gun and it looks like that quarterback's reading somebody on that given play. He's not reading a soul. He's actually truly giving that football away. They pulled that right guard around to the left side, caught that Holden. edge. Offense number eight. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. But now we're Replay realizing why down. they picked up that edge a little easier than, uh, than it should be. Holding call by the slot receiver number eight. That's Michael Ryan from Carlsbad, California. Brings back the carry courtesy of Brendan Dragomer. Dragomer from Burbank. Managed to pick up what looked like a first down and more for Pomona Pitzer. Instead, it sends the Sage Hens back five yards from where that drive last resumed. Another connection to Dragomer, brought down early by 
the Leopards. Nice tackle there, number 36. Emmanuel Stevenson comes in from his safety position like a ball of fire. Came, came out of nowhere, tripped him up just enough to make that play out there on the perimeter. But that was student body right. It looked like they had 14 guys in white jerseys heading over to the right side of that field. Uh, but the Leopards made a great play, third and medium. So far, Wander Simmer hasn't really gone to his left. He's rolled right nearly every snap. Also connected with his brother over the middle for a big first down. That's kept the Sage Hens offense on the field. Wimmer sees an opening over the middle. It quickly closes. He's brought down a gain of maybe two. And what you're seeing is the White Hat dropped that beanbag down. He dropped the football on the turf there for a split second, but fell right on top of his own fumble. Uh, but that was almost catastrophic there for the Sage Hens. Instead of lining up to punt, it might have been just a turnover right there midfield. But instead, here you go. Lining up for the punt are the Sage Hens. We're going to back ourselves all the way back up to the inside the 20-yard 20, 20 line with the heels at the 10 for the Leos. That was a good look at that last play. You, if you noticed it, Sala O'Day managed to go in and get a hand on that ball carried by Sonder Wimmer. Leopards will not rule for a fair catch. They'll try and bring back the punt. They're managing to get it to around the 20, and the offense will take over. And Noah Geeser goes back inside the 10-yard line, which normally is a big no-no. Couple things on that given play by the punt, young punt returner. No, he's a senior, wants to make a play, but he fields that ball over his head and inside the 10-yard line. And if you pay attention to the rules right now, if you let that thing go over your head and wanders off into the end zone for a touchback, you automatically get that ball on the 20-yard line anyway. Uh, got some potters of the yards. If, it, if, I can't, if I can see it correctly, it's balls from the 19 anyway. Hand off to what looked like John Burris. Tedesco out for his second drive of the day. Both teams unsuccessful on their opening drives, turning it over on downs. And what you're seeing the Leos do here is, again, first down from, line from, from the line of scrimmage last series, they threw a perimeter pass, which was ex uh, just pretty much an extended run play. Then run, run, punt the football, and here you go, starting off on first down again, running the ball, trying to establish the ground game with the young freshman running backs. Looked like Burris might have gotten one ball spotted at Laverne's 20. Second down, Tedesco, the sophomore, another handoff. This time Burris will roll right. Eaten up by the Sage Hens. And again, what you're seeing the Leos do is say, we want to establish the run game. We want to keep the football out of the Sage Hens offensive dynamic players. Give the defense for the Leos a little bit of a rest so they can make some adjustments. But again, if you run the ball downhill into the teeth of the defense, it opens up usually as the game progresses. Ball's over the top a little bit later, which again, can help with these quarterbacks as they're kind of coming into their own uh, for the first time in a few weeks. On third down, Tedesco set the offense into motion. It was Jimmy Rumsey moving before the snap. He's able to make that catch there just above the ground. It's ruled a completion and the Leopards will move the chains. And there you go. So you have two real short passes. The last on last drive, you got a short one to Julian Martinez that didn't pick up the first down, but right now on this third and short, third and medium, able to pick it on up to Mr. Rumsey. So on third and medium, the Leopards convert. First down ULV, ball spotted around the 30 yard line for the green. Tedesco taking the snap, he rolls left. It's a quarterback carry. He'll step out of bounds, picking up maybe a couple. Oh, and that was 100% a run all the way. The slot receiver pinned inside that nickel outside linebacker, got the edge, got Tedesco around that corner. They, they really like Tedesco's athleticism and speed. So they're trying to find some things right now that can get him comfortable. They're starting it off with running the football, some control passing game with some uh, T swings, a slant, a hitch, speed out, and then getting him involved with just running him out on a quarterback design run. Prior to getting injured in the three games he had played, Tedesco carried the ball 10 times, picking up a total of 24 yards. The Leopards go nowhere on that play. Sagehens, big stop defensively. And what you're seeing again is that little toss on the, on the fly motion. 
because again, if that ball hits the ground, it's ruled an incomplete pass instead of truly handing the ball off. If there's a mess up in the mesh, uh, and that ball hits the turf, that's a true fumble. And when he just kind of flicks that ball off the fly motion to the receiver, that's now if the ball does hit the turf, it's an incomplete pass. Ball is spotted at the Leopards 29 yard line. Third down for ULV. Looks like Trevor Tedesco is asking for a motion. Nobody was going. Tedesco with some time. Steps right, moves left. Will carry it himself. He's searching for the first down. He'll get it, stepping out of bounds. And there was a little bit of confusion there. Tedesco couldn't find what he was looking for once that play started. Prior to the play, he was asking for the slot receiver to go in motion. Receiver looked back at him and said, no, that's not me, buddy. And they snapped the football. He looked a little confused out there on what he was, what he was actually trying to see. And instead of putting the ball in harm's way and throwing the ball downfield, he said, you know what, I'm just going to pick this first down up with my legs by myself. And there's that athleticism you had talked about. Tedesco's previous longest carry was seven yards. That one plenty more than double digits. Puts the Leopards at the 40-yard line. Tedesco to his right, able to connect, pick up of a few. And what you like seeing on that play, that, that was the very first play from the line of scrimmage to start off the game. The difference with this last play was Tedesco hit him right in stride. And again, it might not be a, a huge offensive play from a yardage standpoint, but what you're seeing is that if you continually hit that receiver or the running back in stride on that front shoulder he can catch that ball on the run there's a block or the right correct block on the perimeter or even a missed tackle those things can pick up you some big chunks of yardage we're in the first quarter from ortmeyer stadium leopard zero sage hen zero some saturday college football from the university of laverne leopards will hand it off pick up of a few yards not quite enough for the first down and that was to number five, Travion Davies. We haven't seen him as much over the last couple weeks. He had some issues holding on to the football previously, but he's their big back. If you see him in person and you get down there, he's got some tree trunks for legs. He's put together really well. Uh, again, he's a little bit more of a vet. He transferred in here um, from Northern California. Um, up in the Oakland area, uh, Division II school up, up there in the Bay. That's Lincoln University. Yes, sir, Lincoln University. But he's originally from Olympia High School down in San Diego. Third down for the Leopards. Tedesco hands it off to Davies again. This time he takes it through the middle. Leopards trying to push him into the first down. Might be a yard short. And again, interesting call on third and medium right now. They're going to come up and be short on fourth down to go for that inside zone downhill with the bigger running back. Uh, not, a lot of, not a lot of running room right there. Those holes are, are plugged up pretty well with the Sage Hens defensive line. Again, that tends to be the Sage Hens moniker right now is really getting after the quarterback and slowing down the run. So on fourth down, Sean Garvey, the freshman, out to punt for ULV. In the backfield for the Sage Hens, it's sophomore Duncan Lee. Lee, another fair catch, this time at the 16-yard line. We saw Sander Wimmer come out at quarterback for the Sage Hens, their last drive. Wimmer is back out again for their second. So the Sage Hens will take over at their own 17. We're in the first quarter from Ortmeyer Stadium. Nothing, nothing between the Sage Hens and the Leopards. Pomona Pitzer unsuccessful on their opening drive. Managed to get the ball to about midfield before turning it over on downs. Wimmer steps to his right, swallowed up by the Leopards' defensive line. He'll be down about the 17. And the Leos are really committing a lot of guys in the box right now to slow down that running game. Again, as we stated last week, Nate, when you have a big running back that can actually run the football downhill, it sometimes makes the defense feel like you got 12 guys back there because normally there's somebody, there's some, the quarterback's handing the football off to somebody, there's somebody lead blocking for the running back. But when you have that quarterback running downhill that, and you've got a running back leading up for him, shoot, it feels like you've got a lot of bodies. Wimmer misses his pass opportunity, able to step forward for a couple of yards, but the Leopards able to still sack Wimmer for the second time today. 
Third down for the Seychens. And Austin Marin, number 10 for the defensive line, coming in huge, along with David Cisneros, number 95. These guys are getting in on the quarterback right now with just four. And if you can continue to do that from the Leo's perspective, that's going to bold really well for a young secondary trying to slow down the passing game. The Leopards came into this game last in sacks four by a team. Simmer already been sacked twice in this first quarter. A pass option here in front of the Laverne sideline. That ball is caught by number one, Kenrick Jamison. And that's a really good job of playing defense and keeping the ball in front of you for the Leos. Covered everything deep, made it real difficult to go over the top, forced him to get to his check down. And Wimmer had to throw down to that perimeter out there and a really good tackle on the sideline. Again, as we stayed, never met, never met a sideline that ever missed a tackle there, Nate. So <laughs> again, staying staying with that right now, still batting a thousand. Seychens punting it from the ten. Ball spinning a good amount. Will roll out of bounds in front of the Seychens sideline, even at the Leopards 45. And there was a two things on that play. One, that ball came off a little funky off the punter's foot, so it was not necessarily a, a real shank where it only went a few yards, but it didn't cover as much as it did last punt. But there's a flag on the ground right now. The officials are having a little powwow, roughly about the 24-yard line. Let's see who this flag's on. Looks like the white hat near ready to make the decision. Sounded like prior to making the announcement, he might have mentioned it's on the receiving team. That would be the Leopards, so we'll see here. Again, if it's after the punt, Laverne will still end up with a football, but if it's before the punt, there's a chance there could be a first down for the Seychen. So let's see what the ruling is here. He's talking to both head coaches, Coach Creek over there. Looks like he's giving some input. So it looks like maybe there the- fouls on both teams on the play. Illegal formation on the kicking team, more than five men in the backfield. Holding on the receiving team, number 10. Penalties will offset and we will replay fourth down. So that'll do it. For that, a replay of fourth down with penalties on both teams offsetting that last play. Good, so it, good job by the refs making sense of that long powwow there. Sometimes when you get the refs in that long powwow, you're really dissatisfied with, with whatever comes out of that. I think uh, they just flipped a coin maybe in, that, in, that, in their little huddle over there and said, let's just go replay the down. Senior Cameron Shirangi back out for another punt attempt. As mentioned, that last one came off his right foot. A little funky. His first punt of the game would manage to get inside the 10 yard line. Then again, Shirangi had gotten it off from closer to about the 35. Here he's at the 10. A much better punt. Noah Geeser fields it at the 20, loses a step, and he's off to the races. Won't get very far as the Seychens Pounce on them immediately. And that's a bummer right there for the Leopards because they had great field position closer to midfield after the shanked punt, but both offsetting penalties and a replay of fourth down. I'll tell you what, the punter for the Sagehens got all of that and then some more, along with a little bit of northeast wind blowing right now. He got all of that and pinned the Leopards inside their 25-yard line on that punt. So Sir Shirangi sets the Leopards back well into their own field position. Ball spotted at the 25-yard line. Nothing, nothing here from Ortmeyer Stadium. Looks like we'll begin the second quarter from Ortmeyer when we return. No score, LVTV3. Mason. Mason. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. A place to make my home.
place that I call A, a defensive stalemate to open us up here from Ortmeyer Stadium. Leopards hosting the Pomona Pitzer Seychens. Nothing, nothing score as we're set to begin the second quarter. I'm Nate Rodriguez alongside Cesar Rivas bringing you today's Saturday afternoon college football action. Ortmeyer Stadium playing host to two sporting events today. This football game commencing at 1 and men's soccer playing later this evening at 7. Trevor Tedesco, the Leopard sophomore quarterback from Rancho Cucamonga, back onto the field. He connects with Travion Davies. There's a flag on the play. And the umpire didn't like something that he saw from the offensive line. I can already see him signaling for a holding penalty by the O-line. Looked like the Seychens were bringing the pressure. Tedesco had an extra second. It's going to be courtesy, likely, of that hold. I do like what Tedesco did on Holy that play. He did one of those little sidearm. Uh, Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Get that ball to Davies out there around the outstretched arms of the defensive end. Um, great catch. I didn't know if Davies was actually going to field that thing cleanly. I was hoping it wouldn't go on the ground. He was able to field it, but... Looks like it's going to be holding on the defense and not the offense on that given play. So a little Patty Mahomes-esque from Tedesco. And the flag against the Seychens puts the Leopards in better position. Davies bursts through the hole there, but brought down by the Seychens. Doesn't get further than the 40. And I'll tell you what, five Davies for the Laverne has the ability to run downhill hard. Again, He's put together real well. He's a little bit older of a player, seasoned vet, has seen a couple snaps at the college level already. Not saying that the freshmen aren't very good. They are extremely talented, two freshmen in the backfield. But Davies just put together a little bit different. A pair of fresh legs as well, experienced at the college level. As mentioned, Davies from San Diego went to Lincoln University with facing the pressure there. Managed to get through the defensive line, but the secondary for the Seychens coming through, bringing down Davies. Again, we're seeing, we're seeing the Leos trying to get downhill, running inside zone right now. But the lack of push up front is really stymieing with that defensive line occupying those gaps inside. It's a real nice play you could see by one of the Seychens linebackers coming out of nowhere just to trip up Davies. We've got a 0-0 game from Ortmeyer Stadium, middle of the second quarter. Trevor Tedesco's pass intended for Juan Gutierrez incomplete. That'll and that's be just, fourth down. And that's just a little timing that's just off of just a little bit. Again, we're trying to get Tedesco in some rhythm, what they call it, off his back foot. And so on that given play, he's got a catch, he's got a rock, and he's got a throw. It just seemed a little bit rushed on that given play. Give him a few more snaps. Hopefully that kind of turns it around a little bit where he can start to get comfortable. Some of it's nerves. Some of it's the defensive line coming after him. Sean Garvey's punt nearly blocked by the Sage Hens, but the freshman able to get it off. Duncan Lee out returning the punt, brought down in front of his own sideline near the 30. And Duncan Lee sure as heck wasn't going to fair catch that one after his last one when he saw all that real estate. There was a lot less room on that one, but he fielded that clean and took it north and south real fast. So Lee gets the St. Chance to the 30. We're a few minutes into the second quarter. Would love to tell you where exactly we're at, but I have no official rule. We do know it's the second quarter. We do know it's a nothing-nothing game. The St. Chance have the ball at their own 30-yard line. Sonder Wimmer out at quarterback for the Seychens. The dual threat drops back, looks right, sees nothing, looks left, nothing again. Instead, he'll take it his own self to the right, challenging the Leopards in front of their sideline, and he'll get pushed out of bounds. And the Leopards only brought three on that play. And what, what you're seeing the University of Laverne defense do right now is they're lining up more than just three guys at the line of scrimmage. On that given play, I think they had about five or six guys, but then dropped eight, only brought three, confusing the quarterback a little bit. That's why you saw him kind of look for his second and first, second, and third read, didn't see it, and then tucked it and started to run. 
Again, a little bit of mismatch out there on the perimeter. Outran, I think, either a defensive end or outside linebacker, but then got smoked there on the sideline when he, when he tried to pick up a couple extra yards. So the Seychens came into this game, a forward to this play, came into this game committing the least amount of penalties, at least hurt by the penalties, the least on average amongst any Skyac team. So far, the penalties have hurt the Seychens, putting them in worse field position on all three of their drives. On average, Pomona Pitts are coming in, accumulating 30 total penalties, but averaging less than 35 yards per penalty a game. In contrast, the Leopards have racked up 47 penalties, costing them nearly 70 yards a game. And again, another design run for Wimmer on that last play. It was a quarterback draw. This time Wimmer over the middle. He's got Robert Terry, who had space. Terry changes directions and breaks a tackle. Able to get all the way inside the 20 and down at the 10. A big play for zero, but there's a, a flag on the field. Well, on that given play, the Leopards brought everybody. The slot receiver, number zero, got inside. Matthias Olsen got inside the coverage in man-to-man -man defense. And when you catch that ball on the front shoulder in man-to-man -man defense as you're running what they call a slip slant or a skinny, and if you can connect on the run, that's why you're getting the huge chunk yardage. There was no safety over the top. The Sagehens caught the Leos in an all-out blitz. That pitch and catch is something you practice literally from practice number one. And if you can get them in stride the way they did, that's where you're going to pick up a lot of yardage. There is no foul for a block in the back of the play. Result of the play is a first down. So it looked like the flag will be brought back. It's Matthias Olsen, as Caesar mentioned, the Pasadena native, picking up big yards for the Sage Hens on an incredible catch and run. Gets Pomona Pitzer all the way inside the red zone. Ball down at the 11. Ball is carried by quarterback Grady Russo, picking up a couple. And that's one of those long plays, going back two plays ago, where now the Leopards coaching staff on the defense with Coach Creek and Coach Cushman, Coach Adams, is sitting over there going, how much more pressure do we bring? They've been bringing three guys and being able to keep the Sage Hens in front of them. You bring the all-out pressure and you get beat like that and might, might have some ramifications for play calls later in the game. So here's another run play by Russo. Ball is dropped. At the goal line, the Leopards picked it up, but it looked like the rule on the field is that the ball was down. And it looks like they picked up the first down on that play along with number 28, Oscar, Oscar Montenegro has to leave the ball game because he lost his helmet. That's a big loss for the Leos right now on first and goal from the one inch line. Montenegro, one of the defensive anchors for the Leopards, now Russo. Actually, it's Wander Simmer taking it from the one, and Simmer able to cross the goal line and pick up six for the Sage Hens. Touchdown, Pomona Pitzer. And you had to know that was coming. That's quarterback right, quarterback left, quarterback right again. Back to back to back run plays on the design quarterback runs. I'm not sure why the Sage Hens subbed out their quarterback after the long pitch and catch, uh, but they finished it off with number 12 the same way they started it. So they get Wimmer on fresh legs. Able to pick up the Seychens' first six points. The point after is good by Sharangi. And Pomona Pitzer takes a 7-0 lead in the second quarter. And if you're looking back at that defensive series and compare that to the first two by the Leopards, you're kind of scratching your head going, gosh, we want to get after, want to get after the quarterback, but now you're going to evaluate how much the risk reward is for trying to get after the quarterback. The Leopards have been doing a really good job of again keeping that ball in front of them and really making that Sage Hen offense work for everything, forcing them to punt. They didn't have anything major as far as turnovers, but they were able to get home and, and force them to scramble and force the punt. And sometimes just forcing the punt is better than anything if you're comparing that to those long completions. So it took us until the second quarter to get a score here from Ortmeyer Stadium. The Leopards hosting the Pomona Pitzer Sagehens who get on the board first. A one-yard touchdown run from Sonder Wimmer.
Puts the Sage Hens on the board. It's 7 0. Sharangi back out with his kickoff. Looks to be fielded by freshman Noah Allen. And Allen will go left toward the Leopards' sideline. Able to break one tackle, but he's blocked by his own teammate. That's right in front of the 10 yard line. Seichen's bringing him down around the 11. Now, I'll tell you something here, Nate. Number 12, Wimmer is the big time player for the Seichen's, but right now in my book, number 36, Cameron Saranji is actually the MVP of this first half for the Sage Hens. His big leg has really changed the field position for the Sage Hens, whether it's been a punt or a kickoff. That ball was fielded in the end zone. And again, if you're the kickoff returner here, if you fair catch that thing, that ball is going to be placed automatically at the 25 yard line. But Again, everybody wants to make a play, and the punt, the kick returner on that given play says, I think I can pick it up and get past the 25-yard line. Unfortunately, the ball is now placed about the 12 or 13. Tedesco, the sophomore quarterback, had Ropke, Rumsey, and Ramos Kamaka to his right, but a 10-yard penalty on the Leopards' offense will send them backward just in front of the goal line. And that's not a way you want to start off a series here already backed up. Now you're going to go first and 15, backed up inside your 10-yard line now. Makes it real difficult on a young offensive line and a new quarterback. So it's only a five-yard penalty from the 13 to the 8 go the Leopards. Trying to answer a Pomona Pitzer touchdown. Tedesco, the same trio of receivers to his right. It's Ramos Kamaka making the catch. Tackled about the 15. And there, there you go, Ramos Kamaka, big time asset over the last couple weeks, starting to find his role in the offense. Unfortunately, he's still down on the floor right now. The athletic trainers, Keith Savage and staff are running on out there as quickly as they can. You hate to see that on the in break. Sometimes you don't know what it could be right now as he's laying hunched over on the ground. Hasn't moved very much at all after absorbing the hit. There you see he makes the catch. Breaks for the middle, lands on his side, wondering if maybe that right hip was affected when he landed. And again, Ramos Kamaka really coming into his own the last few weeks, being the coming into the game, not necessarily being the factor that he might have wanted, but over the last two or three weeks, starting to be this top target to complement uh, Rumsey over on the other side. And so now the quarterbacks have another threat that they can go to, a dependable wide receiver. And there you go, number 18's off the turf, got rattled a little bit, and he's jogging off, which is a great sign for the Leos. So the Mililani Hawaii native takes a minute to get up off the turf, but jogs off under his own strength. 7 0 Sage Hens over the Leopards. Middle of the second quarter from Ortmeyer Stadium. Nate Rodriguez alongside Cesar Rivas bringing you some beautiful football on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. These two teams searching for a win here from Southern California. Tedesco puts Ropke in motion before the snap. Here he connects to Samson Olajide. Olajide, an extended arm, gets to the 20. Three. And trying to get that extra effort in there to get the first down. He's close. It's going to come down to about third and about a half a yard right now for the Leopards. It's nice to see him bounce back. I know he had a little frustration there in the second half last week with, with a couple drops. But again, just like Kobe Bryant said, just keep shooting yourself out of this. You, again, you'll get back into the swing of things. I had a conversation with Olajide last night at the Leopards women's volleyball game. Was in high spirits in anticipation for this one. Had his first catch there as the Leopards run play. Looks to get them to move the chains. Great job by the Leopards of just picking up what they need for the first down right now. But like you said, Sampson, I see him walking around campus. He's at other teams' ball games supporting him. He's also a, a work-study guy here working at, at multiple different events for the athletic department. He's always got a big smile on his face, grinning ear to ear. A member of the Leo community, Sejens looked to jump offside, but as that defensive line pointing at number 59 of the Leopards. 53, five yard penalty, still first down. And with no instant replay right now, 
on the scoreboard. I can't quite tell whether that was a sales job by the D-line or truly a false start by the offense because sometimes when that defensive line jumps, they start pointing at anybody wearing the opposite color jersey just to try to get the referee to throw the flag on the offense. I have Academy Award win and sell if that's the case. No doubt. Penalty goes on Adam Torres, the senior from Chino. Tedesco takes the snap. Immediately looks right, is nearly picked off. And I'll tell you what, number 31, Kalani Pickett, the freshman, made an unbelievable break on the ball. So Pickett looking to pick it, just dropped it. Here you see Tedesco taking the snap. He had looked right. Oh, replay of actually it looked like what we thought was that false start by Pomona Pitzer. You saw the sell job though. Tedesco looked left, rolls right instead. Still looking down the field for an option. Instead, he'll run out of bounds. It's a loss for the Leopards. And big number 44, Mr. Cobb, the senior, the 6'2 senior, number coming in at 6'2", 245, was barreling in on him. Tedesco got the edge, but the former linebacker converted defense alignment, if I'm not mistaken, came on in and was running Tedesco down, keeping it at third and long. Third down and about 12 for the Leopards. Ball spotted at the 21. Tedesco facing pressure, has an extra minute. Now he has no time. Dancing from left to right. Looking for an option in front of the sideline, incomplete. Now that's the gunslinger in him a little bit. You probably gave Coach Creek about another half a dozen gray hairs on that given play because he went backwards for about, I don't know, at least a dozen yards on that play, Nate, as he's trying to buy more time. And he went blindly backwards um, as well, which could have been a, a terrible play, but he's so athletic. You go, no, no, no. Good job, buddy. Sean Garvey managing to avoid another Sage hand hand, but not by much. This ball taking a friendly bounce for the Leopards. Picked up at the 36 in Pomona Pitzer territory. So the Leopards come up empty on their last drive. Pomona Pitzer looking to add to their last drive, a touchdown, a one yard run courtesy of Sonder Wimmer. Seven nothing Sage ends here from Ortmeyer Stadium. And a great punt was able to flip the field position. That again could have been catastrophic for the Leopards being backed up again. But again, getting that ball out, getting it off, letting it roll. Like you said, a nice little friendly bounce, couple bounces. The coverage unit did a great job of letting that ball continue to roll down to the, about the 35 yard line. Sonder Wimmer, the New Hampshire native, will take the snap and roll right. Wimmer carrying it himself down at the 40. And he is a big body guy and the Leopards defensive players are gonna have to wrap him up. First guy on the ball bounced right off of Number 12, like bumper pool, took the second and third defenders to get, actually get him down. Looks like we've got an injured leopard down on the field. That's Delonte Moore on the knee. That's something you don't want to see if you're a leopard fan. Again, Delonte has been one of the staples right now on the defense, but just seems about every week he's just fighting and, and scratching and clawing to stay on the field he's been battling a rash of injuries he is a guy that can play multiple positions plays linebacker started off the season being very productive with not only just a lot of tackles and tfls but a couple interceptions scored a defensive touchdown he had out of necessity last week had to go down and put his hand in the dirt play a little defensive end for the leopards uh, so we'd like to see him back out on the field as soon as possible to give the leopard defense more of a fighting chance. Pomona Pitzer on second down. Wimmer will take it again. This time he's got an opening to his right in front of the Laverne sideline. Brought down just inside the 45. And again, there's that design quarterback run right now. So it looks like the strategy for the Sagehens are when the Leopards come up to the line of scrimmage and they're showing no ceiling 
all those safeties down in man-to-man -man coverage, they're going to try to take the top off and beat you with the pass. And then when they're dropping eight, he, he's going to run the football and try to find those pockets of green grass. Wimmer picked off by the Leopards over the middle. Able to bring it back to about the 35 for the Leopards. That was number nine, Devin Martin, the freshman from Fairfield. A big pick for ULV. And that play was huge. As we're saying, if they're going to go through the pass, if you line everybody up at the line of scrimmage, and that's exactly what that happened on that play. The Leos lined up everybody at the line of scrimmage, showed man-to-man -man coverage across the board. The Sage Hens went back to the same exact well, tried to hit it in the crease between hashes, and they dropped, the Leopards dropped the linebackers, didn't bring the all-out blitz, and he threw the ball right to Devin Martin. And what you want to tell the linebackers, stay up the sideline, my man. You got, you got a pick six or at least more yardage on that play. He took it inside, got tackled before he could pick up more yards. Tedesco getting an opportunity from the 40, looking for Gutierrez, but just overthrows him. And that was pretty much the best protection that Tedesco's seen all day long. Didn't have to run around and buy a couple extra seconds with his feet. He was able to sit back there, kind of read the defense, just overthrew it just a smidge. But for an offensive line that's been really band-aided all season long, giving up right now, coming into the game about 35 sacks, if my memory serves me correctly. Today, they're holding off that formidable defensive line by the Sage has and giving Tedesco a little bit of time, specifically on that last play. 35 sacks is correct. The Leopards suffering more sacks offensively than any other team in the Skyak. Tedesco has been kept careful today. That ball tipped in and out and back into the hands of Burris for a pickup of a few yards. And it's great to see the, qu the quarterback and the running back connection right now, trying to get those running backs back involved. We talked about the two true freshmen. That's one of them, number 26, Burris. Has a lot of productivity. They think very highly of the young man, hoping that they can have some continuity up front with the offensive line to start to open up some running lanes for this young man moving forward. Burris, a freshman from Seattle, Washington, grand graduated from Ingraham High School. The Leopards from Pomona Pitzer's 35, a flag on the play. Tedesco will throw it in front of the Sage Hen sideline to Ola Gide. We'll see how the flag impacts the play. And unfortunately, it looks like there was a, a flag on the offensive line for a holding. That would be a first down, though, if they wipe this flag and pick it up. But the conversation the right now. by both teams on the play. Holding defense number 34. Holding offense number 53, penalties offset, replay third down. So again, we're going to get another replay of a third down here. Uh, last time it was a fourth down on a punt. This time it was going to be a conversion for the Leos. Unfortunately for the Leopards, that thing's going to come on back and put them back into third and nine. So Olajide's catch brought back third and nine for the Leopards. We're in the second quarter from Ortmeyer Stadium. Pomona Pitzer, Sage Hen seven. University of Laverne Leopard Zero. You're watching Skyac football on LVTV3, Laverne Community Television. Trevor Tedesco and the Leopards looking for their first points. Tedesco had looked right to Olajide last time. Here he goes left. That ball nearly picked. Great cover by the Pomona Pitzer defense. And I'll tell you what, after the last holding call by the defense on that last play. The Zebras are letting, letting both teams play. There was a lot of pushing and shoving in the secondary by both offense and defensive receivers and DBs. And the Zebras let them play on. So they're going to put themselves in fourth down right now, fourth and long. Tedesco's still out on the field. Looks like Sean Garvey will not be asked to punt here on fourth down. 7 nothing Sage ends. About five minutes left to play here in the second. Tedesco has a man to his right, was looking for Ola Gide, nearly picked off twice in a row. And again, we're seeing by Pickett back-to-back -back plays or back-to-back -back drives where he makes breaks on balls that could almost go back for pick sixes. You go that, down to that well too many times if you're Tedesco, he might make you pay. Hopefully there's not three, a third time the charge for 
the Leopards because that's going to be ugly if he, he gets a great break on that ball again. He's going to take that, catch that thing, and go all the way home with it. He's certainly waiting to pick it. So the Leopards come up empty again. 7 nothing Sagens. 5-10 on the clock before half. Grady Russo taking the snap, runs it up the middle, is clocked around the 45-yard line. Looks like he fell just short of it. And again, what the Leopards are doing right now, if you're paying attention to the secondary, is the linebackers and the DBs are all cramming inside of about eight yards of the line of scrimmage, forcing a check, at least on first down, for the quarterback to check it. Russo, the dual threat from Dover, Washington, carrying it on back-to-back -back plays. Falls short of midfield. However, it moves the chains for Pomona Pitzer, first down. And then what the secondary is doing, then dropping at the last second, which is forcing the quarterback into more of a draw and a keep than throwing the football. Russo, the freshman, over the middle. In front of the Leopards, number nine, Devin Martin, who if you remember, ended the last Sage Hens drive early with a big pick over the middle. And a lot of new players are seeing some playing time for the Leopards right now. You're seeing Devin Martin out there for the injury, for a couple different injuries at linebacker right now. Nate Tagaloa, number 47, out there. Both Simmer brothers out lined up as receivers for the Sage Hens. Russo goes to Quentin Simmer. Ball is dropped. It looked like Simmer had made the catch. But there you hear the officials ruling incomplete. Great pass coverage by the Leopards. Enrique Ibanez, the freshman safety. And I'm hearing a theme here, Nate. You're yelling off a lot of, a lot of freshmen. Yep, a lot, a of, under, lot, lot of freshmen. A lot of underclassmen right now getting significant playing time. And for keeping this thing close with a perennial contender right now in Pomona Pitzer. Run play for the Sage Hens. A quarterback carry is brought down early. A big stop by the Leopards defense. Keeping the Sage Hens around midfield, but it looks like, oh, maybe not. False alarm. Thought we had another injury to Delonte Moore, but he's up. And the punt unit is out for both teams. It looks like they're going to keep the defense out here right now. Took out a couple D linemen. Oh, they left a the couple D linemen in the game. They're gonna play this safe, this safe punt return. Gearing for a fake right now. Geeser out to field the punt. He'll rule it. He'll rule it fair. Sagehands are coming trying to pick it up inside the 15. And I know Coach Creek is going to have a conversation with 82 Geeser about get the heck away from the ball just for that reason. That ball took an awkward bounce and almost hit him right in the foot. And if it touches that punt returner, that's a live ball. And Pomona Pitzer and the Sagehands can fall on that football for a turnover. And so I know Coach, Coach Creek's going to go on over there and do some coaching of that punt returner and make sure that he's getting away from that ball. So the Leopards dodge a bullet there. Three minutes, 33 seconds before half. Sage Chen seven, Leopards zero. A great defensive battle between two teams who have struggled with scoring offense. Fake handoff to Davies. Tedesco rolls right, connects to the freshman Jimmy Rumsey, who's brought down at the 15. And Jimmy Rumsey was in fly motion. He was trying to get out of the backfield. I think that play was supposed to be uh, completed a little bit earlier, but he had to dodge a couple white jerseys on his way to the flat. It wasn't able to do that, so that's why it looked a little awkward. He got cut short of actually getting out into the route. Tackle was made by number 49 for the Sagehens. Here's Tedesco over the middle again, this time to Samson Olajide who gets hit with the hit stick down around the 17, but manages to hang on. Great job by Ola DJ to, to hold on to the football there, concentrate on the ball. It's really good to see the young man gaining some confidence right now, whether it's a one or two yard 
reception or further down the field, just getting him in, into some rhythm with the quarterback as well will pay dividends down the road as this game progresses, as long as the Leos can keep themselves within shooting distance. Nearing the two minute mark here in the second quarter. Third down for the Leopards. Third and about five. Tedesco steps up, has some opening at the line of scrimmage. Instead, it's to Davies. Looks like it'll be an incomplete pass, but Davies, it looked like he might have even taken a step with it. Leopards catch a break. And I missed the linebacker that was in coverage there, but that was textbook punch of the ball out, and it was really close to being a fumble. Wasn't able to make a football move with it off the catch. He was just starting to bring that ball into the bread basket, and that linebacker punched that ball out for an incomplete pass, but that was pretty textbook. I thought it was going to be an amazing grab by Davies on the pitch and catch. Sean Garvey, another quick boot, able to keep it away from the Sage Hens. Looks to be Duncan Lee bringing it back into Laverne territory for Pomona Pitzer. We're within two minutes before half from Ortmeyer Stadium. The Sage Hens defense has brought the heat today. They lead seven to nothing. There you see a minute 54 before half. And what you're seeing right now with this two minute offense now, you got a minute and 54 left in the half, but the field position now favors the Sage Hens right now. They're only having to go roughly about 48 yards to try to get to pay dirt. See what the Leopards dial up on defense right now. Grady Russo from Massachusetts looking right in front of the Leopards sideline. He's got starting quarterback Sonder Wimmer open. Wimmer out of bounds at the 20. And what the Sage Hens are going to try to do right now is that they're going to try to get themselves into the zone but not leave it too much time for the Leopard offense to come back out here and counter before halftime. So you're going to see them try to bleed the, the clock out as much of the play clock as they can. Russo looking deep, trying to get it done here. No flag on the play. It looked like the Leopards in coverage might have had some early contact. That was number 36, Josiah Finnell. And what you're seeing, the DBs and the receivers are getting allowed, they're being allowed to do have a lot of contact right now. There's a lot of latitude that the back judge and side judge are giving the receivers and the DBs to play a little football today, it looks like. Grady Russo, a little bubble pass to number 29 of the Sage Hens. Looks like it'll be a tackle for a loss, but a couple flags thrown on the play. And number one, number Jamar Brown came Moore. firing through. On the play. Near making that play a TFL, tripping but offense number 75. 15 yard penalty the from the previous spot. Still second down. Jump on in and corral the ball carrier here at the last second to keep them in front of them again and keep the clock running. If you heard the white hat, it's a 15 yard penalty against the Sage Hens for tripping. Big break for the Leopards, puts the Sage Hens in a little tougher field position when it looked like they were marching their way to the end zone. They were inside the red zone. Now they're spotted at the 35. Grady Russo and the Sage Hens looking for their second score in the first half. 7-0, Pomona Pitzer leads Laverne. Russo, the Dover, Massachusetts native, looking for Quentin Simmer. Good coverage by the Leopards. That was number 25, Trevor Carson. And My mistake, excuse Hector, me, Hector, Hector Fascio. Fascio. Yes, Hector Fascio looked like he was go, doing great in fate at the very beginning of the play and then lost sight of the wide receiver. And then at the very last second, at that third phase of the, of the play, was able to make a play on ball for the incompletion. So Fascio staying in the face of the receiver. Here he is challenged again in the end zone. No flag. And there's a lot of grabbing and pulling and tugging, not just by the wide receiver, but also by the DB. So both of the gentlemen on that given play, number zero, Matthias, and also Hector Fascio for Laverne are being able to play a little football. Might look a little bit more like three flies up back in middle school, but 
the referees aren't throwing the yellow hankies on that one today on back to back to back plays. Well, I really thought Fascio was gonna get called for PI there, but looking at the replay by our LVTV team, you could see Matthias Olsen certainly get his hands on the corner for Laverne, try to shove him off of him. A flag before the snap. Game, offense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. So a delay of game by the Seychens pushes them five yards backward. They're still in Laverne territory. Ball marked at the 40. Just over a minute to play before half, and we've got a timeout. Oh, maybe not. Thought we were going to have a timeout. Heard the whistle. So, so the Sage Hens are going to play the odds right now, what everybody's calling the analytics. With a minute and six le seconds left in the half, they're going to punt the ball to the Leopards and say, hey, 80 to 90 yards is going to be too far for you to cover with the offense. What a punt by Sharanji. Able to get it inside the five. Pitzer, Pomona Pitzer, picks it up at the one. And I'm going to stay with my first vote, which is the MVP for the Sage Hens in the first half is number 36, Cameron Sharanji, because I said 80 to 90 yards. I misspoke. 99 yards. The Leopard offense is going to have to go in 55 seconds. So again, playing the analytics on that one paid off for all the gentlemen that go to school at, at Pomona College and Pitzer College that make up the one athletic department of Pomona Pitzer. Checkmate by head coach John Walsh of the Sage Hens making it the entire 99 yards to go for Tedesco and the Leopards. A tall task with 55 seconds on the clock. The sophomore from Alta Loma fakes the handoff, connects to Juan Gutierrez down at the six. And that's a gutsy call on first down, backed up on the one yard line, throwing the football down there. Because again, you stop the clock if it's an incompletion. You don't want to turn the football over. But again, when you're a pistol offense, you want to make sure you can actually run the ball out of the end zone. A short connection. Leopard's now able to get to about the 10 yard line. My notice on that last play, Gutierrez got up a little bit banged up. Looked like maybe a, a leg, some sort of leg injury. He's, he's hobbling around on the sideline right now. Looks like Coach Creek's gonna Call a timeout with 26 seconds left. Talk it over on first down, or excuse me, second down, and kind of figure it out. What do they want to do? Do they want to kneel on the ball and go into halftime down 7-0, or do they want to take a shot or two and gamble and try to make a big play here? A lot of real estate out in front of them, though, Nate. So after back-to-back -back completions, it does look like the Leopards will pick up the first down. Ball seems to be spotted at the 12-yard line with 28 seconds before half. Sage Hen 7, Leopard 0, courtesy of a two-yard touchdown run from starting quarterback Wander, sorry, Sonder Wimmer. And I don't know if a lot of people noticed, but then he went out and played wide receiver, yep. brought in another quarterback, and they liked throwing the jump balls to him on a couple plays in that last drive and said, hey, let's see if you can go. You're, you're doing it with your arm. You're doing it with your legs. Let's go see if you can do it with your hands now. And he's, I, I said a dual threat. No, he's more of like the trifecta. Sonder Wimmer doing it all for the Sage Chance today. He's got them on the board. Pomona Pitzer leads by seven. The University of Laverne held scoreless so far through the first half. They've got 28 seconds to try and change that, but they're marching from their 12. Handoff play to John Burris, pick I, up a maybe one. And I think that's the answer to the question of what is Coach Creek and the offensive staff going to do right now before halftime? Looks like they're just running out the clock, and they're going to be satisfied with going into the locker room, down one score, seven to nothing, making this a defensive battle, not doing anything too silly right before the half to put their defense in bad position and say, let's regroup on offense. Some things have worked. Let's see what we can add to the playlist and see if we can move the football around and get in the zone before the end of the football game. So we've got the scoreboard up and working. At least the clock is from Ortmeyer Stadium. 7-0 Pomona Pitzer over the University of Laverne. From the University of Laverne, 
a defensive battle, like you said, Caesar, in that first half. What stood out to you? Well, I'll tell you what, as I'm looking around the field right now, it's 84 degrees, there's not a cloud in the sky, and the sun's starting to beat down. I'm looking at the Pomona Pitzer players. They've got cold towels on the back of their heads and the back of their necks. It looks like something similar over there with the Laverne players as well. This feels more like a first weekend of September type of heat and warm, maybe not 100 degrees, but uh, the ball players are starting to definitely feel it. The score's kind of making you feel like that as well, uh, where they're trying to feel each other out more of a defensive struggle, waiting for the offenses to start clicking. Um, again, Pomona Pitzer being able to put a drive together, but outside of that, this has really been run by the defensive units by both teams. The intangibles certainly coming into play on this Saturday afternoon. Pomona Pitzer scoring on a two-yard run courtesy of Sonder Wimmer. They lead seven to nothing. Their defense has come out, nearly picked off Trevor Tedesco multiple times but the Leopards dodging bullets, trailing this Pomona Pitzer squad by only one score. Both teams looking to come back out after the halftime break and add to the scoreboard. We'll be back in about 19 minutes with more Skyac football on LVTV3, Laverne Community Television. Hi, I'm Peyton Manning, and I'm partnering with the American Red Cross this year to tackle blood shortages. Giving blood's important because every two seconds, someone actually needs blood, and unfortunately, only like 3% of the U.S. population donates. So we have to step up to give and to make sure there's plenty of blood available for those in need. Visit redcrossblood.org to get in the game and make an appointment to give. Welcome back inside Ortmeyer Stadium. You're watching Skyac football on LVTV3, Laverne Community Television. The University of Laverne Leopards hosting the Pomona Pitzer Sage Hens. A 7-0 game as we enter the third quarter. A look at the halftime stats there. The Sage Hens dominating the passing game, but the Leopards trying to get things going on the ground. Caesar, what can we look forward to in the second half? Well, I think what you're trying to see from the Leopards is that they're trying to establish the run game, which right now is actually more yardage uh, than what they're in one half than they're what they're averaging in a whole game right now throughout the season. So you're seeing the commitment to it. Again, whether or not they have the bodies to push those Sage Hens around up front, uh, we'll see what happens in the third and fourth quarter. But again, having a new quarterback come on in, the timing, the rhythm of things, uh, you're seeing that have an effect on the total passing yards. You're not seeing the... Uh, the Leopards trying to stretch the field uh, lengthwise. You're seeing them try to get dinks and dunks down the road, uh, trying to, again, convert some manageable situations, but they haven't really tried to stretch it yet. No individual standout statistics for either side. It was a 61-yard pass from Grady Russo to Matthias Olsen that really set up the Sage Hens' first score. This carry by Duncan Lee on the kickoff return gets Pomona Pitzer all the way to midfield, down about the Seichen's own 49. We'll confirm that in a second. And we're underway here in the second half. And number 26, Duncan Lee, makes a lot out of a little, backed on up. And there was a great block made about the 25-yard line to really spring him on loose. And he almost took that thing to distance. He had only about one more defender to beat. Grady Russo, the freshman from Dover, Massachusetts, still out under center. He flips it here to Quentin Simmer. He was able to step out of bounds. Quentin Wimmer, number 20, 
the brother of Sonder Wimmer, who started this game at quarterback and has since lined up as one of the receivers for Pomona Pitzer. And what you're seeing out of all three quarterbacks, really, both quarterbacks from Pomona Pitzer and the quarterback for the Leos, is that they're just trying to dink and dunk, hit their playmakers in stride, and let the playmakers do something with their feet. Grady Russo taking it himself, staying on his feet. A nice jump cut there to get him inside the 35. Looks like we're going to have a leopard down on the turf, though, around the 40-yard line. And again, the design runs by Pomona Pitzer's quarterbacks right now proved to be the big difference in the run game between the Leos and the Sagehens. You're seeing both number 12 and number 16 for the for the Sageheads come on out and with the deliberate quarterback runs, whether it's the draw when the Leos are dropping eight or the QB powers are zoned, student body right and left right now, that's trying to keep the Leos a little off balance on defense. Sala O'Day is the leopard down on the turf. O'Day from Pasadena, transferred in from Pasadena City College. Now getting up and will be walked off the turf with the help of the training staff. And he was part of that real big play on the muff punt last week for the touchdown for the Leos. Thought they had a scoop and score on that, but still got the Leos down inside the 10-yard line last week on the muff punt return. Be nice to have Day back out here on the special team units as well as on the defense. Grady Russo setting the offense in motion. He takes the snap and looks left on the run, changes directions, and now he's got a hole to the right. Leopard's unable to bring him down at the 30. He gets just outside the 20, steps out of bounds, moves the chains for Pomona Pitzer. And as a defensive coach and defensive coordinator, you're just pulling your hair out because you really line that whole thing up for your defense to be hyper successful. That's a TFL right now because that was designed to run to the defense's right and he was bottled up, but there was no pursuit from the backside, so the QB just stuck his foot in the ground, reversed outfield, and was able to pick up a lot of nice chunk of change over on the right side on the naked side. Sagehens with a screen pass. Leopards can't make the first tackle. They get the second for a loss of about one. So twice on this drive, what you're seeing Pomona Pitzer do is try to leak somebody out of the backfield for that quick arrow route into the flat. Both times, the Leopards kind of sniffed it out. First time they did it, the Sagehens were able to pick up a couple yards on, on a missed tackle, but that time he was just met with a whole slew of Leos, came down for a negative play. No running back on this play. It'll be Grady Russo taking it himself. Another jump cut gets him some more yardage. Russo, the freshman, inside the 10. And right now, the quarterback running the football, on the, and that's, again, a quarterback draw. He's seeing the Leos drop back, drop eight guys into coverage, only three pass rushers. The back of the head, he sees the back of the heads of the linebacker. They're not looking at him, and so he's taking off running. And that tends to be, I think it's more of a check right now at the line of scrimmage or an adjustment mid-play that the quarterback's recognizing that drop eight and taking off and running. Kenrick Jamison into the play for the Sagehens. This is Russo trying to take it himself to the house. Looks like he fell about a yard short. And that's just a quarterback ISO. That's that tailback turns into the lead fullback on that. He follows him up the weak side B gap, trying to get himself into the zone. They're going to minimize these splits right now. Chances are they're going to probably move out of the pocket. Here's Russo, a quarterback carry going right, brought down by the Leopards. Great job by the secondary right now. That was a safety and a linebacker, two young freshmen. I think that was Mr. Martin, if I'm not mistaken, making that play off to the weak side of the formation. And I was wrong. I guess they minimized that, that, those splits, that formation, to the wide side of the field. I thought they were going to try to move the pocket a little bit, and instead they ran to the weak side of the formation with the quarterback. Eamon Glasscott down on the field for... Pomona Pitzer looks like the linebacker coming down with a cramp, perhaps. And that was Enrique Ibanez, the freshman, number 39, finally taking the quarterback down on that play. Great job securing the tackle, because again, there's not a lot of wiggle room down here. You got about a yard, yard and a half to play with. You miss a tackle, that ball carrier is falling in the end zone for a touchdown. So again, great job securing the tackle. We're going to hope the best for big number 64 right now that he's able to enter back in the ball game. Looks like he might have rolled an ankle or something on that play. East Setauket native Max Linden hobbling off the field. 
Good to see him, however, walking under his own strength, just with a little bit of a limp. We've got 11.20 left in the third quarter. Coming out of halftime, Sage Hen 7, Leopard 0. Pomona Pitts are knocking on the door of more points. And you got a running back in the backfield right now with the direct snap. Quentin Simmer trying to get across. Leopards trying to provide the defense at the goal line. Sage Hens think they've got it. Leopards say they don't. Officials say they do. Touchdown, Sage Hens. And what a play by both sides of the ball on that one there, Nate. The defense did an outstanding job of stuffing it, and then the whole bush push right there with the rest of the guys in white jerseys grabbing and pushing their guy across the goal line to secure the touchdown. But again, I thought the Leos might have kept him out because again, they got a secondary push there. But again, the rule is you only have to cross the, the line there at the end for the touchdown. You just need the nose of the ball to cross the goal line for it to actually be a touchdown. You don't need any real part of your body, just the ball. Sharanji's boot, perfect yet again. The kicker for the Seichans having a phenomenal day. Both Wimmer brothers picking up touchdown runs here from Ortmeyer Stadium. This is Quentin Wimmer, the senior, just shouldering through the defensive line with the help of the rest of the Leopards defense. And the Sage Hens do a really good job offensively right now of utilizing their, their personnel. They're utilizing big number 12 as a quarterback, a wide receiver, and also um, in the backfield as a quarterback running back. And then uh, they bring their brother inside, they bring his brother in the game, and now he lines up at quarterback, or really the only lone running back in the backfield, and he was the one catching the passes just a few few drives ago in the first and second quarter. So again, the Wimmer brothers, they're, they're doing a heck of a job right now at utilizing their skill set and being multifaceted. 14 to nothing, Sage Hens lead, third quarter from Ortmeyer Stadium. Number 36, Cameron Sharanji, a strong boot. A fair catch for the Leopards, caught by Noah Allen. However, that was a fair catch, Caesar, at about the four yard line. Correct, and that ball is now gonna come out to the 25. So as I was saying earlier, it doesn't do you any good to catch that ball in the end zone or even inside the five if you don't think you can get, at least get the ball to the 25. So if you feel like you might not be able to get that ball outside, to, outside the 25 yard line, fair catch it. Don't take a toll and a beating on your body as well as your protection team back there on the kickoff return team. Just fair catch it and you'll get that, you get a freebie on the 25. Use the rules to your advantage like they did on that play. So a touchback puts the Leopards at the 25. Rancho Cucamonga's Trevor Tedesco stepping left, dodging a tackle, stepping out of bounds. Pick up of maybe one, if any, gain. It looks like there's a late flag on the Leopards sideline. Not quite sure Tedesco, what that design play was gonna be. Whether Charlie it was a quarter, Russo, true, flat comes in quarterback late. draw or he was actually looking for somebody, but I didn't see any receivers moving themselves downfield. Officiating crew talking it over. We'll see the White Hats decision here. Personal foul, illegal blind side block, offense number eight. Penalty is half the distance to the go. Replay, first down. So it's a penalty on Samson Olegide for a blind side hit. Moves the Leopards back closer to their own end zone. And I'm not sure if that's a half distance to the goal or a 15 yarder. They said a half the distance to the goal. Usually that's a 15 yard penalty on the blind side, but instead the ball's gonna be placed at the 12 and a half yard line. Tedesco and the Leopards still searching for their first points, trailing by 14 on their own home turf. The sophomore takes the snap, looks left, ball is dropped there, intended for what looks like Samson Olegide. Okay, and so Olegide has a penalty on the previous play and then a drop on that play, and what we're seeing right now is the young man just kind of needs to get out of his own head. One negative play doesn't need to lead to another one. Did a great job in the first half of overcoming the week prior and catching and securing the football. Had a string of a few catches in that first half and some plays. Like to see him bounce on back, get over that negative play on the hit and catch that football, tuck it away. Help out his quarterback. Olegide, plenty of athletic ability. Tedesco able to step up, has room. 
taking it to his own sideline, steps out of bounds. Got to pick up a nice chunk of change. But based on the pe previous penalties, it's still going to be third and forever right now, roughly about 15 yards to convert. Right now, the Leopards are going to need to get themselves out of being backed up because if they punt the ball from here, their punter's going to be inside the 10-yard line. They're going to need to flip the field on field position on this drive. By the looks of it, we're still using a scoreboard without downs or the ball marker, but it's third and 14 from the Leopards 21. Laverne's first charge timeout taken here with 9.59 on the clock. We're in the third quarter from Ortmeyer Stadium. Pomona Pitzer, 14, the University of Laverne, zero. And it's an interesting play call right now for Coach Creek and Coach Martinez over there on the offensive side of the ball. It's third and 14. You haven't really stretched the field yet vertically all game long. You've got a quarterback that's just starting to come off, um, off the injury bug. Want to get him into a rhythm, but what do you do? Do you run the ball right now and get yourself into some manageable so you're not backed up and you can punt uh, with the wind right now because the wind is blowing north and that's the direction your offense is facing? Or do you try to take a shot, gamble it on up, see if you can come on down with something positive or hopefully you don't come away with a negative play? Leopards have a decision to make coming out of the timeout. Third and 14, just under 10 left to play in the third. Leopards convert on third down less than 30% this year. Here they've got third and long. Javion Davies, the running back on the play. Tedesco steps up again, taking it on his own feet in front of his own sideline. A common theme in this drive, but there's a flag on the play. He loves that left sideline, doesn't he? Yes, he does. We'll see how this flag, however, looks like it might be against the Leopards. After a short game. And I was right behind the left guard where they threw that flag. And what the Sage Hens are doing is saying, hey, Tedesco, you're going to have to beat us with your arm. They dropped eight, zone coverage, three deep, five guys underneath. And they're saying, you're going to have to find a window somewhere in the 14 yards to convert and get 15 for, on, uh, for your offense. And just wasn't able to find the window there on that given play. Couldn't pick it up with his feet. Five-yard penalty against the Leopards brings out the punt team on fourth down. So Sean Garvey, the freshman, will get it off from about the 20. Duncan Lee looking to field it. Spotted around the left hash from the 30. Lee watches it bounce once, twice, and will let the Leopards pick it up right about the 15-yard line. Great punt by Sean Garvey. Getting that thing up with the wind hitting it on the roll, and then seeing that ball die around the 14, 13, 14 yard line of the Sage Hens. That's what we're talking about in flipping the field position. Understand that it is a two possession game, but there's plenty of time still left in the game. Got majority of the third quarter still here. Got to collect yourself on the sideline offensively. Hit the, hit the penalty bug a little bit on that drive. You go shoot. Can't pick up it in big chunks. We're going to have to put some, put some drives together methodically of at least four or more on any given play. Grady Russo sending Kenrick Jamison into motion, but Russo taking it his own up the middle inside the 25. And so far, the play of the of, of that quarter for the Sage Hens has been draw. 16 on the draw, drop eight for the Leopards, 16 on the draw, picking up positive yards. He's gonna put them into second and short right now. It's gonna be interesting to see whether or not the Leopards get impatient and start bringing the heat, or they continue to make them work for it on the draw. The trio of receivers to his right, a duo on his left. That's where he goes. Laverne, a big tackle there for not much of a gain. Number 25, Hector Fascio comes in and drops him like a, does a wrestler move, double leg takedown on that one. Heck of a play. I know soaking wet. Hector Fascio might be about 155 pounds, uh, but he brought all 155 and a quarter in on that one. Russo looking over the middle, able to connect. A nice two-handed catch on a dive by Jamison. And Russo, 
He kind of muffed that, that ball a little bit when it was snapped to him. Big number 91, Justin MacArthur, was barreling down on him, all 6'2", 240 of them, that grad transfer, and he was able to get that ball off right before he got hit. So now Russo looking deep to his left, will take it himself, Laverne not there to stop him. Russo now with space in front of the Laverne sideline. Looked like he might have stepped out just before the 50. And make no mistake, number 16 is very athletic. He made about three different Leopards miss in space, including number 28, Oscar Montenegro, who is one of the leaders on that linebacking crew, in that linebacking crew, out on the perimeter. Again, big play for the offense happens to be the quarterback's legs. Russo came into the game one of the Sage Hens leading rushers. They utilized the quarterback draw more than almost any other play in the playbook. This ball carried by number 29 of the Sage Hens. That's Brandon Dragomer, the freshman from Burbank. And on that play again, you're just seeing a little T-swing, very high percentage, getting the ball out into the playmaker's hands, catching it on the run, putting it on that front shoulder, let him catch it in stride. He's able to get eight or nine on first down. Second down and about two for Russo and the Sagens. Nearly the same play by design. This time Pomona Pitzer looks like they pick up the first down. That was Quentin Wimmer. This time instead of throwing it to the tailback, they're throwing it to the slot receiver. All they needed to do was pick up about one and a half yards and they picked up about three. And the theme of the half right now for the Sages is just pick up what the Leo defense has given them, inch by inch, yard by yard. Russo has certainly been great about thinking on his feet. Here he finds Quentin Wimmer again, who in coverage makes a two-handed catch, comes down with the ball, and is brought down inside the 10. And Wimmer number 20, the brother comes on down with a 50-50 contested ball. They went to that well a few times against Hector Fascio in the first half, and they were not able to get come down with the completion on that individual play. Hector Fascio wasn't able to get his head around fast enough and his hand between the hands of big number 20, and the completion gets completed down here inside the 10. Quentin Wimmer getting it done, Grady Russo. Sacked there by the Leopards, but it looked like it might have costed one of the Leo's members of the defensive line. Yeah, big number 52, Anthony Esquivel, has been battling in and out of the lineup the last couple weeks. Again, as we've been stating previously, it's kind of been a bash unit, and these guys are trying to gut it on out, giving everything they got to keep this game respectable and within shot distance for this quarterback to kind of get in, into a rhythm trying to buy some time for the offense to start to get going here in the third quarter. Esquivel, you could see, was the one who made the tackle, but just dealing with the repercussions of it. Makes it second down for the Sage Hens. Esquivel back to the sideline. And it looks like 17 Delonte Moore is now gonna move from that linebacker spot down to the defensive end spot. He's been playing a lot of it today flanked by MacArthur. Russo into the left corner of the end zone, picked off! Hector Fascio, a big interception. Ball's gonna go the other way for the Leopards. And that's where you go down to that well a few too many times. Went jump ball, jump ball a few times in the first half and they fought off each other. And we were talking about in the first half, there was probably PI by the offense and the defense, but there were no flags. They start off the third quarter with going over top over Hector Fascio for a big completion to get him down in the red zone. They try to go back to that same well, except for he underthrows his receiver just a little bit. And big number 25, Hector Fascio, makes a humongous play for the Leopard defense. First and 10 from the 20, Leopard's going the other way. You were just talking about Fascio's size or when you line him up next to Quentin Wimmer, you could talk about lack thereof. It didn't matter there. A big interception for the Leopards. Brings out Tedesco and the offense. There's a flag on the first play. And, and the Leopards start with Travion Davies in the backfield on this drive. Hill right now. Big number five tries to pick up a few, but unfortunately again, 
the Leopards get bit by the penalty bug, and we're going to start looking at first and 15. The Sage Hens and their head coach takes the penalty on this one. And I, I reg regress, it's going to be first and 20. Yep, 10 yard penalty on the first play of the Leopards' drive, fresh off an interception. Leopards offense still looking to start the engine, trailing 14-0. Travion Davies, back-to-back -back carry, swallowed up at the 10. There was absolutely nowhere to run for number five back there. Every single gap inside and on the perimeter. Great pursuit by the defense. Number 44, 92, 54. You get a reel off about half a dozen white jerseys. They were all in on the party. And unfortunately, number five, the running back Davies for Laverne had nowhere to run. The Sage Hens defense has played lights out to this point, nearly picking off Tedesco several times. Leopards offense still has a big goose egg on the scoreboard. Over the middle, Tedesco able to connect. Catch is made, ran out of bounds by number 82, Noah Geeser. What a great catch and run by Geeser, number 82. Catch him on the shallow crosser. Tedesco did an excellent job of hitting him on that front shoulder in stride. He was able to pick up some bonus yards after the catch. And what the head referee right now is doing, he's signaling to allow the, the substitution for the defense to match the offense right now. And that's why you're seeing him hold the ball for the, for the defense to get the snap. Third and short for the Leopards. Third and about two, Davies loses his step. Tedesco throws two wide. It'll be fourth down. And that's what happens under duress. Can't set your feet. He's trying to paint that ball perfect on that front shoulder of number five, Davies, but he, it was out just a little bit too far out in front of him, and Davies couldn't make the single hand catch. So the Leopards interception by Hector Fascio keeps the Sage Hens from scoring but a quick three and out brings, about, brings out Sean Garvey, excuse me, and the punt team here with a little less than three and a half left to play in the third. A fake punt, Garvey's gonna take it himself and he's got space. The first down and more for the Leopards on a little bit of trickery gets this place going. And I'll tell you what, the Mad Hatter coach Chris Creek loves, loves, loves the fake punt and I've been shocked he hasn't tried that yet this season. I know it's in the, in the game plan each and every week. They work on it. But I was just going to say that wind is blowing a little bit more east than it is north. And he said, you know what? I'm not going to even chance this thing. There is nobody on the left side of this offensive formation. And he just green-lighted Gesser to go take off and run. Sean Garvey, the freshman kicker, also listed as a safety on the roster. Showing off that speed, picking up the first down, putting the Leopards just about at midfield. Here they give it to Andre Maldonado. Back-to-back -back trick plays. Maldonado looking down the field, overthrows Samson Olegide. And that was scary. From the original backwards pass, and once they threw that thing backward, everybody in the stadium knew that was going to be a double pass, including the secondary. And Sampson was covered, number eight, was covered like a blanket, not just by one, but by two Sage Hens back there. Maldonado had to evade his own would-be tackler to try to get that ball off. But at that point, you're saying, shoot, throw that ball out of bounds, run it, take the L on the negative yardage, but please do not turn that ball over. Nearly saw some insane athleticism there from the Pomona Pitzer defensive end. Trevor Tedesco with two and a half minutes on the clock left in the third. Has a trio of receivers to his right, but he drops the snap. He's going to pay the consequences for it. Sacked at the 35. And sometimes as a young quarterback, you get so excited because you think that play's going to work. You take the, your eyes off the ball for a split second, and it's just long enough to drop the ball, and it looks like that's what happened on that given play. He just saw a big play downfield, got excited, took his eyes off the snap for just a split second. Ball ends up on the ground, and you're looking now at about third and 16. There you saw a look at Thomas McConnell coming full speed ahead, taking out Tedesco for the snap. Third and 16 from the 40 in Laverne's own territory. Tedesco looking over the middle, overthrows Olegide. Fourth down. 
and that was close. That's the first time we've seen them really try to stretch the ball down the field. That drive right now from the double pass from Aldonado down to Simpson, or even on that attempt right there, trying to hit that skinny post for a first down, but it was just like you said, just about a, a yard too far out in front. He could get his one paw on it, but just couldn't get two. Sean Garvey with plenty of room to get this punt off. Duncan Lee catching it at the 20. A couple of jump cuts end up getting him stuck. He's able to stay on his feet for a couple of extra yards, brought down just inside the 30. And the Leverford coverage unit is really, looks like they're really tired running down field right now. There was a couple guys that were close, but just not converging fast enough right now on the punt returner to actually force him to stay inside the 30 yard line. 90 seconds on the clock here in the third quarter. John Walsh's Pomona Pitzer Sage Hens leading Chris Creek's University of Laverne Leopards 14 to nothing here from Ortmeyer Stadium. You're watching some Saturday Skyak football action on LVTV3. Sonder Wimmer back under center. Another double pass, this time executed by the Sage Hens. Grady Russo gets the second pass off down the field. Sage Hens are brought down inside the 30 yard line in Laverne territory. And Coach Walsh and his crew says, hey Coach Creek, if you can try it, we can try it. Except for this time, it was completed. There is a flag down on the field, so that thing might be coming back, whether First off, you've got to make sure that the ball is actually a backwards pass. So the first pass, in order for the second one to be legal, the first pass actually has to be backwards. It's not good enough to be behind the line of scrimmage. It truly has to be backwards for the second attempt to be forward. You're only allowed one forward Illegal forward pass. Forward pass. Number 16 of the offense. The first pass was forward. Five-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Loss of down. Second down. And that's a big hit for the the Sage Hens offense right now because you do lose the down and the yardage. So again, like I was saying, if the first pass is even at the line of scrimmage, not truly behind it, they call that a forward pass. They define it as a forward pass. You can only have one on any given play. So the Leopards bailed out by that initial forward pass from Sonder Wimmer to Grady Russo. Now the freshman from Dover, Massachusetts, take it himself and he's down at the 40. And right now, the Leopard defense has been opportunistic, and they're just going to keep making the Seichen offense go quarterback draw after quarterback draw, dabble in throwing the ball deep every now and again, and they're going to make them beat them with the quarterback draw play is what it's looking like right now. Junior wideout Michael Ryan onto the turf for Pomona Pitzer, native from Carlsbad, California. 14-0. 30 seconds left on the clock. Russo's pass is tipped and incomplete. And number 47, Nate Tagaloa, was barreling down on the QB, almost for the sack. And again, I'll, I'll give it off. I'll give it up to the quarterback. He is one tough, tough, tough player. Taking a lot to get him down. He's making moves into the open field. It's taking multiple defenders to drag him down. And because big old Nate Tagaloa had him in his grips, couldn't get him down. He was able to still get that ball off. Grady Russo listed at 6-2, fills out every inch of it. Bunt falls just about the 30-yard line. Hector Fascio nearly making contact with it. Picked up by the Sage Hens around the 25-yard line. And that's scary. Hector Fascio's over here blocking down off the Sage Hen sideline, and he can't find out where that, he can't see where that ball's at. They're starting to yell, ball, ball, ball. He starts moving towards running off the field because, again, that's what they're coached to do. They're coached to run off the field, and in the middle of running off the field, he almost got hit in the head with the ball. So we're at the end of the third quarter, 17 seconds before we get to the fourth. Sage Hens 14, Leopard 0, Trevor Tedesco and the Leos still looking to scratch the scoreboard. The sophomore, graduate from Alta Loma High School, taking it himself toward the sideline, absorbs a hit right around the 30. And they said, well, instead of handing the football off, Again, we're seeing some, some beg borrowing and stealing of some ideas here. 
you got the double pass by Laverne first, and then Pomona Pitzer get, gives it a shot of their own, and now you're starting to see a lot more design runs uh, coming from Pomona Pitzer, and now Tedesco's out there for the Leos doing a little bit of his own student body left. We'll be right back with the fourth quarter. Leopards and Sagehens, 14-0 game. Pomona Pitzer leads. Skyac Football, LBTV3. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Fifteen more minutes of action from Ortmeyer Stadium. A beautiful Saturday afternoon for a great football game on hand here from Ortmeyer Stadium. The Pomona Pitzer Sagehens coming into today three and three led by head coach John Walsh, leading the University of Laverne Leopards 14 to nothing. Head coach Chris Creek and his Leos looking for their first conference win. Trevor Tedesco and the Leopards out in their green uniforms moving from right to left on your screen here in the fourth. We'll have second down and 10. Tedesco takes the snap, has room in the pocket, now moves to his left, passes dropped by John Burris. And there are a couple guys back there. I was looking to the far side of the field on the Leopard sideline, and I saw a green jersey streaking by a corner. But Tedesco was feeling the heat, couldn't see him, so he was having to evade to his left. The wide receiver was open on the right side of the field, but there's just no way for Tedesco to be able to actually see that out of his peripheral. So he's trying to run, dink and dunk the ball, trying to get the ball off to his running back, but again, the awkwardness of where that ball is landing onto the receiver, just not able to come down with the football. Third down and 10, Tedesco over the middle, passes tipped by number 54 of the Sagehens. That was Thomas McConnell, one of the players to watch for today. That'll force fourth down and 10, and here comes the punt unit. And you see Tedesco really trying to thread the needle and really, quite frankly, uh, forcing the ball into his big tight end, number 11, Julian Martinez. It tends to be, you know, quarterbacks have a relationship, we'll call that, with specific receivers that they've been, or tight ends or running backs that they've been working with all season long, and it's in his comfort zone, and that just might have been a little bit too much on that one. Sophomore Duncan Lee gets to make this catch on the run. Now he's off to the races. He's hit by the Leopards just short of the 40, but he's in Laverne territory. So what we're seeing on the punt return unit by Pomona Pitzers, they're setting up that return every single time now. They're realizing they're not gonna be able to get to the punter even though he's standing 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. It's kind of a facade back there because he's taking one step and kicking the ball. So now they're setting up the return every single time and those guys in green jerseys just aren't able to get downfield fast enough and make a play on 26 and 26 ends up getting down the field and breaking almost the 40 yard line on the return. Grady Russo out under center for the Sagehens. Sets the offense into motion, that's Quentin Wimmer. Russo takes the snap, will carry it himself, brought down by a quartet of Leopards just inside the 40. And they're motioning down, the Sagehens are motioning on down into what it looks like to be a two-back system now. They're running quarterback power. There was no gap inside. Great job by the Leo defense of stuffing every interior gap, but the quarterback's so athletic. Russo's just bouncing it outside and still picking up positive yards on first. Kenrick Jamison, the senior running back into the play, trying to provide the block. Russo over the middle, passes tipped off of Seichen and caught by the Leopards. Another interception for the Leos. And again, Nate, I'll say I dare you to do that twice because the safety who was in coverage actually has his back to the, to the quarterback. He gets hit in the back of the head with the ball. The ball pops up in the air. 
and Victor, uh, excuse me, Hector Fascio lays out, sacrifices his body, and makes an unbelievable grab for his second interception of the day. Hector Fascio putting the two in 25. Two interceptions this afternoon. Leopard still trail by two touchdowns. However, that's a big play to give Laverne the ball just in front of their goal line. The Leopard defense truly coming up big right now. You say get the ball back to the offense, give the offense more opportunities to try to get down the field and put something together. And they truly are doing that with 13 minutes and 58 seconds left to go in this ball game. What a strange play. Hand off to John Burris. Gets past the five, pick up of a few yards. And now it changes a little bit here, Nate. Before you're thinking about field position, one score ball game, one possession ball game, got to get out from the back of your end zone. Now not only are you trying to get out from the back of your end zone, you got to score. You got to score at least once right now to make this a one possession game. You probably have three possessions in this quarter and this is the beginning of it. You got to do something with this possession if you're the Leopard offense. Leopards have been kept scoreless all game long. Sage Hens lead by 14. 13 minutes and 15 seconds left to play. John Burris set into motion. Tedesco looking to Jimmy Rumsey for the catch. Rumsey changing directions, getting to the middle of the field, picks up the first down, and the Leopards move inside their own 20. And there you go. It doesn't have to be flashy if you're Tedesco. You're just trying to feed the ball to your playmakers right now. Let them do a little something with the ball. If you're a playmaker, though, you got to make sure that you're holding on to that football. Tedesco has Roki, Rumsey, and Ramos Kamaka to his right. It's a pitch to John Burris, pick up of a few. And that's an interesting formation right there. They went quads into the boundary right there. It's four wide receivers into the boundary. Really three that you could see plus the wing. And then there went quick toss, tried to outnumber the Sage Hens into the boundary, trying to pick up some positive yards on first down. Leopards flip it now. It's Rumsey and Roki to his left, as well as Noah Geeser. Tedesco, the sophomore. Getting a quick audible from the sideline. 12 minutes and 10 seconds and counting on the clock. Tedesco, two seconds to call the snap. He gets it off. Facing pressure. Scrambles right. There's the flag on the play. Ball looks to be caught in front of the Leopards' sideline. Not sure if it was a completion, plus the flag. Pass is complete to number 82, Noah Geeser. Penalty on the play. And number 44, Mr. Cobb, the senior out of Diamond Ranch High School, is given the offensive tackles for Laverne an absolute fit today. The former linebacker converted to defensive end. My guess is that he put on a little bit of weight. He got big. He went from middle linebacker to defensive end, but he still runs like a linebacker. He's given fits to those offensive tackles, and he's getting flags left and right for the Sage Hen defense, pushing the Leopard offense all the way back to second and long. Forest offensive lineman Adam Torres under a bit of pressure there. It was a holding on the Leopards number 53. Moved the Leopards backwards. Now we've got another discussion between the White Hat and the rest of his officials on the field. We'll see. 11.43 on the clock. No announcement. Second down for the Leopards. Travion Davies, the running back on the field in this play. Tedesco looking for a pass option, facing pressure in front of the end zone, able to get out of trouble, throwing in front of the Sage Hen sideline, incomplete. And Tedesco, that's the second time he's done that where he's actually looked to his right, done the 360 spin out back to his left, off the blind side and he's gotten more lucky than anything that there wasn't somebody else screaming across from his blind side because he's given up a lot of yards when he's reversing out on field. Certainly looked like he had entered the leopard zone end zone. And what you're seeing the Sage Hens defense start to do right now, they're going from that three down look dropping eight. They're moving that defensive front to four down on first and second down right now doing some line movement to create problems for the offensive line for the Leos. 
Tedesco. Space to step up. He finds it. Rolling left. Looks like the quarterback will take it himself and step out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring up a fourth down right now and a punt. And now as time still kind, kind of wanders off the clock right now to 11.24 left, Coach Creek thinks there's enough time, still enough possessions in this ball game, so he's going to punt, not do anything too crazy on this series. Last time we saw the Leopards bring Sean Garvey out, the Leopards faked a punt. Garvey was able to pick up a big first down that was needed for the Leopards at the time. Here, a low snap forces Garvey to shoot it right. Both teams letting it bounce, bounce, and picked up at the 45. And you're seeing the low trajectory of that punt because now Garvey's punting into the wind. He doesn't have the wind behind his back, can't loft that thing up and let it hang. He's actually got to start to hit some line drives because, again, if he, if he doesn't and that thing stays up in the air for too long. Not only can the punt returner, the dynamic number 26, Duncan Lee, get up underneath it and catch that thing on the run, but it's just not going to travel as far. That ball is going to get blown back into his face. Saw that happen the last time Garvey punted. Lee picked it up around the 30-yard line, brought it back into the Laverne 40. Grady Russo, the freshman from Massachusetts. Quick look to his right. He connects. Seychens pick up about three. And again, the Seychens are being pretty methodical themselves right now. Real controlled passing game. They're not trying to do anything too much. They've kind of gotten nipped the last two series with back-to-back -back picks by Hector Fascio. So what you're seeing, even in throwing the football, that's pretty calculated. That's just an extended kind of toss play right there. Quick outlet on the arrow route to the H-back with, with all the blockers out there out on the perimeter. Pass was complete to Jack Susanka, the Seychens. Now Russo looking deeper over the middle. He's got a guy open. That's Matthias Olsen, the Seychens' leading receiver, getting inside the red zone for Pomona Pitzer. And if you see the replay on this or happen to be able to watch it on playback, you're going to see the motion out of the backfield. There's no option really to run the football other than the quarterback. You, you flood the field with four receivers, and then you have multiple vertical routes. There's more vertical routes than defensive backs that are covering downfield. And now you got to pick and choose your poison as a, as a DB back there, who you're actually going to lock up with and who's going to be running scot free. And they just happened to guess wrong on that given play. Sage Hens got first and 10 at the 15. A quick connection in front of the Sage Hens sideline from Russo to Dragomer. Pickup of about two or three. And that's just a quick screen out on the perimeter. Quarterback counts how many defenders are out there. If there's somebody out there close enough to make the play, there wasn't. Flips it on out and picks up five on first and 10. Ball is spotted just inside the 10. Russo sees the whole defensive line crash. Almost stays on his feet, but gets swallowed up. The Leopards, another sack. And that was going to be another design draw. He was going to pump it to throw the T swing and then pour it up north and south through probably one of the either the A or B gap on the QB draw. But the D line converged, closed that gap on down, made a great play, getting a TFL, creating a third and medium now for the Leopards. Officials call an injury timeout. Leopards looking to come to the assistance of big number 52. And that's Anthony Esquivel. That's the second time so far this half we see him go down. Again, we mentioned earlier these guys are battling all kinds of injuries. Upper body, lower body, extremity injuries. This time of the year you get really banged up and these guys you kind of duct tape your bodies together. If you played this game before, you know that you know you don't make it through an entire season injury free, and your body hurts, and you got lots of bumps and bruises. And a hat goes off to Keith Savage and the training staff over there for being able to band-aid these boys and get them back out and ready on the field. Grady Russo, end zone of feeling eminent this time. Russo overthrows. He's been picked off in the end zone twice already by these leopards. And that's going to bring up fourth down. There was all kinds of crossing patterns, just way too much clutter. That ball was tipped once, if not twice, on that play. Again, kind of dangerous for Russo trying to pick it up. 
obviously the Sanchez didn't believe that they could run the football for the first down. They had an opportunity to still pick up a first down in the red zone. But now they're going to try to kick the field goal here with number 36, Cameron. Sharanji from San Juan Capistrano. Up and through the uprights for an extra three points for the Seichen. 17 nothing Pomona Pitzer here from Ortmeyer Stadium. Eight minutes and 42 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Sarangi, and I'm going to have to keep practicing that. I appreciate the save of on course, that, Nate. Of course. But, uh, right Sarangi. now, I, I keep saying 36 is right now the MVP, in my opinion, of the game. There's been such a controlled, methodical play pace by both offenses and defense. I think both defenses are playing outstanding. I know uh, Pomona Pitzer's up right now 17 to zero, but based on some of the situations that the Leopard defense has been in right now, they keep coming away with making some plays to keep the Leopard offense in it and having opportu multiple opportunities to create some drives to score some points. But, you know, again, a lot of this has to do with the foot of big number 36. He's put the Sage Hens in some really great positions defensively and their defense, Pomona Pitzer's defense has made the dividends this afternoon. The senior kicker just exudes confidence. Booting here from the 35, a spinning line drive that clears the end zone. Yeah. Touchback for the Leopards will set them up at the 25. And there's no way that thing makes it even on the green grass when he has the wind behind him right now. That wind's blowing pretty good and he didn't need to kick anything, anything special that thing was going to catch wind, catch air, and, and just keep on going, and it did. It, it, he, almost, he basically kicked a field goal uh, from the 35-yard line, the opposite 35-yard line. An impressive leg from number 36 of the Seychens. That Pomona Pitzer team is up 17 to nothing. Trevor Tedesco, fresh off the injured list, coming out, putting together a strong performance, but this Pomona Pitzer defense even stronger. You'd love to see Ramos Kamaka and Rumsey get into some sort of flow right now on these on this drive. Tedesco has been moving on his feet all game long. Does the same here. Steps out of bounds. And I'm looking downfield, and there is not a guy in a green jersey that's open right now. Tedesco has nowhere to throw the football right now. The receivers for Laverne are gonna have to get open in order to give Tedesco an opportunity to try to feed the ball to him, because right now I'm looking downfield and on that given play, there's not a guy in a green jersey that is even closely, remotely open. Tanner Gomes and Andy Butler doing a great job as the defensive backs of Pomona Pitzer. That ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Luckily enough for Tedesco, it comes down incomplete. And that's gonna come up to third and long right now which hasn't been the strong suit of the Laverne offense up to this point. See, see what Coach Martinez dials up right now. All season, the Leopards converting at less than 30% on third down. This is a big pivotal play here to try and avoid the turnover on down. The Leopards trailing 17 to nothing. Third and 10 for Tedesco, who's got dual receivers to his right and a trio to his left. A little bit of space for him to roll right. He's got Rumsey, the freshman, makes the catch, brought down at the 45. And there you go. Now that's what we're talking about here, trying to get 84 and 18 in some sort of rhythm in this, in this series. Tedesco buys a little bit of time, steps up in the pocket. The Sagehens are playing zone defense. 84, Rumsey finds a window in there. And Tedesco is able to see out his peripheral that there's somebody sitting in that pocket wide open. That's 84 for a first down. Laverne into Pomona Pitzer territory. Seven minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Back-to-back -back completions to Rumsey, who's tackled just outside the 40. And that's what we're talking about, that rhythm. You're just trying to get in some sort of rhythm, some sort of flow. Uh, it's Some people call it momentum. It's really just trying to get some timing down off the catch rock and throw, get the ball out quick, let your guys catch the football, make some plays. Keep moving the sticks right now. That's what the Leopards are trying to do offensively. Samson Olajide, the receiver closest to the Pomona Pitzer sideline. He's had a couple drop balls today. It won't be a pass option here as Tedesco will pick up the first down on his own two feet, getting inside the 25. And Tedesco goes, all right, Russo, you got, you got some of your moves. I got some of mine. You guys want to drop eight? 
we can do the same thing and run some quarterback draws, and that's what that design run was right there for number two for the Leopards. Tedesco dropping on back. They're in empty formation, forcing the Sage Hens to be in soft coverage right now. Tedesco first and 10 from the 35, rolling left, looking deeper toward the end zone. Tedesco had placed it out of bounds for Olajide incomplete. And that was going to be a good 50-50 ball, allowing Olajide to battle up for that ball, something that the referees didn't kind of miss. But in the, in the body checking with the corner, they both stepped out of bounds, but I didn't see the referee drop his hat on the sideline, so they missed that play. Regardless, it was an incompletion anyway. Ronnie Roki into the game for Chris Creek's offense. Olajide coming off the turf, second and 10. Six and a half left to play for Mortmeyer. No running backs out for the Leopards. Complete pass play connected with Rumsey inside the 20. Third down. And it's gonna be third and short. Great pitch and catch right there. So I said Ramos, Kamaka, and Rumsey, but right now they're, they're finding the, the rhythm with Rumsey right now on this drive. Beggars can't be choosers. You just ask it for any one of those receivers to really start to get separation and make some plays, and that's what's happening with number 84. You know the Leopards are all about that youth movement. Tedesco with six minutes on the clock. Looking at third and about two. Number two for the Leopards, drops back, facing pressure, gets it off into the end zone, off the hands of his target. That was Jimmy Rumsey. I like the play call on that. So the Sage Hens lined up six guys at the line of scrimmage versus an empty formation. That means they're bringing one more defender than the offense can block for. And so Tedesco calls the number for Rumsey to go up for the ball and the deep ball and says, I like my matchup, I like my guy. They sub out the personnel here with Maldonado in the backfield. Here he goes, Maldonado, usually designated for the quarterback draw. He tries to keep it himself and pick up the first, but he might have ended up a yard short. It'll be interesting to see what the referees do right now, whether they give him the first down, they measure, it's down at the 19, 18 and a half. First down, Leopards. And again, I love the play call there. They do a quick substitution. They literally go from five wide to a full house backfield. They stick the running quarter, but the other running quarterback back there with Maldonado and say, let's go pick up a yard. So first and 10 for Tedesco, who's back out onto the field. Ball was spotted at the 15. Tedesco, plenty of space to his left. Opts to keep it himself. Tries to get to the sideline, but is brought down just outside the five. And there was a couple different options for him to throw the football there, but he just, just didn't want to risk throwing an interception in the end zone after moving the ball all the way downfield. I like the decision by Tedesco. Didn't feel confident enough that he could get his guy or lead his guy correctly. Said, I'm gonna just play smart right now and pick up eight yards on first down. Still plenty of time left on the clock. Four minutes and 45 seconds and counting. 17 nothing. Leopards looking for their first score. Rumsey able to break the tackle, hit him with the spin move. Touchdown, Leopards. And there you go. Got to find some rhythm. Love what the offensive coaches have devised on that series, which is going five wide. So we've got to do something different. And the difference was lining up in empty and slinging the football around the field, not necessarily stretching the field on the vertical game, but finding the pockets in that first and second level. They obviously found their go-to guy from the first few weeks, which is big number 84. I'll say big in plays, not necessarily in stature, but 84 is listed on the roster as 5'9", 152. And I say, okay, prove it. But uh, he played like he's about six foot six on that drive made at least a half a dozen plays in that drive, brought the Leopards back within a two possession game. Rumsey's been playing like a 6'6 guy since week three, coming on as the Leopards' number one target this season. Puts them on the board here in the fourth quarter. Max Jimenez, a perfect point after, and it's 17 to seven. 
Now again, we get into decision-making time for Coach Creek and the staff over on the Leopard sideline. There's 4.38 left in the game. You need the ball back twice right now. You can either kick the ball off to enforce your defense to make a quick stop with a three and out, you get the ball back, and then you got to score and probably kick an onside kick, or you said, hey, we got an opportunity right now to try to go for the onside kick. Let's just go for it right now. Looks like the Sage Hens are lining up for the onside attempt right now, regardless of what Coach Creek is going to do. Jimenez looks ready for it. 4.38 on the clock. Fresh off a Leopards touchdown. Jimmy Rumsey, his second touchdown catch of the season. Kicker Max Jimenez gets it out to Duncan Lee. Out of bounds around the 15. And the one thing you can't do at that point is kick the ball out of bounds and get a 15 yard penalty because the ball goes out of bounds. Anywhere Kick else on the bounds. green grass. On the kicking team, ball will, will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. So now the Sage Hens are going to start off on first and 10 with the ball all the way on the 35 yard line after the penalty. So it puts the Sage Hens in great field position immediately after a Leopard score. 17 to 7, two possession game, 10 points separating these two teams. The Sage Hens, if this score holds, minutes away from their fourth win of the season. The Leopards still fighting to stay in this game. Grady Russo carrying it himself to about the 40. Leopards have a guy down on the turf. Justin MacArthur, number 91, the grad transfer. Looks like he's reeling around there on the ground with his right leg out. We're gonna hope it's nothing too serious. He's pounding on the ground, looks pretty upset. Probably upset that he's not gonna be able to finish this ball game if it's, a, if it's something that's kind of major. Looks like it's certainly bothering him a good amount. Leopard's training staff is going to help him up off his feet. I'm not sure if I've, I've read off and announced the athletic trainer as much as I have today in any given game, but. At Keith, this point in the season, Keith, Keith, Keith Savage. Savage yep. is, Keith Savage is one of the MVPs right now on that Leopard sideline trying to get these guys dealt with, handled, duct taped together and back out on the field. Again, hoping that there's nothing major Nothing long term, just you know, bumps and bruises that don't feel good at the time, but something they can deal with and eventually get back out on the field. This Leopards team trying to mend itself with two games left on the schedule after this. This is the final home game for the Leopards this season. Expected to play next Saturday at the University of Redlands and the Saturday after that at Chapman University. Grady Russo back-to-back -back carries good enough to get the first down. And if you're the Sage Hen offense, now this is where you just say, all right, we're gonna get into overdrive and we're gonna go four minute offense, which is literally four minutes and 15 seconds left in the ball game. It's a two possession game, 10 points. And they're gonna put the ball in their quarterback's hands and go student body right, student body left. And you don't wanna do anything that's too high risk where you can create a turnover. So even if something as simple as handing the ball off and creating a mesh, don't want to put the ball on the ground. Definitely don't want, probably want to put the ball up in the air unless you absolutely have to right now. Another quarterback carry, Grady Russo brought down. This time a nice tackle by the Leopards, number 36 at the 45 yard line. And what this does, whether or not the Sage Hens are picking up positive yards or not, it's running valuable seconds off the clock. So now the clock is down to 331. The clock is still running, it's second down. And again, by running the clock, running the ball, keeping the ball inside the field of play, not running the ball out of bounds and no incompletions, the clock doesn't stop. It keeps running and now it's just a simple math equation and the Leopards just might not have enough time. Seven seconds and counting on the play clock now at five. Grady Russo continuing to just run it out. Let's the Leopards try to bring him down inside the field of play. That'll force head coach Chris Creek to take a timeout. And that's a heads up play right there, Nate. The quarterback actually was getting tackled and converted it into a slide before he got tackled out of bounds, stopping the clock. That forced Coach Creek and the Leopards to call the timeout instead of, the, instead of them being able to hold on to one extra one with three minutes left to go in the game. 
Three minutes exactly left from Ortmeier Stadium. The Leopards managed to get on the board here in the fourth quarter, but still trail by 10 with just a few minutes left to play. John Walsh's Sage Hen 17, Chris Creek's Leopard 7 from Ortmeier Stadium. Just three minutes left to play. And right now, if you're on the defensive staff over there with Coach Creek and Coach Adams, you're telling your guys, you got to get them out of bounds and create a turnover. Six inch punch, tomahawk, interception the ball, strap, you know, sack, strip, fumble, gang tackle. First guy there wraps him up and 10 other guys are stripping away at the football. They need themselves a turnover to get the football back to the offense. Leopards have him in third and long. Russo taking it in front of his sideline, looking to air it out and get rid of it. Flag is finally thrown. That one looks like it'll probably go against Artist Orange the second for pass interference. And Nate, I'm gonna say pass I'm shocked right Defense now. Defense number six, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. All game long by both teams. They elect to throw the flag on that one play. It was incompletion already. There wasn't anything really major of an effect that either either guy in a green or white jersey had on that given play because it was pretty much stuffed up and it was a bad throw. Matthias Olsen was the intended target. You could see on the replay, Orange using two hands to push the big Olsen off him. And I'm all for it if that's the way they've been calling the game all game. But it's not, but it's, not at it all. It just has not been. Tackle is made just outside the 30 there. Catch by number 20. Number one, Jamar Brown makes an outstanding tackle. That's the second time I've seen him make a play like that out on the perimeter today. Real quick to respond. Unfortunately, the clock is still going to run because it's still in the field of play. Right now, the Leopards need the ball to be either incomplete or the ball carrier needs to get out of bounds or else they're going to have to spend some more timeouts. With 20 seconds on the play clock, head coach Chris Creek has not called his timeout. With two minutes and 10 seconds on the game clock, there is a two second differential between the two. Russo taking it himself, swallowed up by the defensive line. Not sure if that's enough for a first down. He had about four yards to go, picked up only one. And if I'm not mistaken, I know the scoreboard's off a little bit right now, but if I did my counting to three correctly, I think the Leopards still have one more timeout. Yep. They took one early on in the, in, in the half, took one just recently to stop the clock. And right now it's gonna go third and two. And if they can stop the Sage Hens here, forced to fourth down, they'll get the clock, they'll get the ball back with about a, just under a minute to go in the ball game. And again, that's a big if, if they don't, if they stop the Sage Hen offense from converting on first down right here. Looks like the Sage Hens will run the play clock all the way down, then call timeout with a minute 21 on the clock. Strategic play calling by head coach John Walsh. Strategic game planning, really probably the better way to define it. A minute 21 left to play, Sage Hens 17, Leopard 7. So what you're thinking right now is the simple math equation, and again, I'm not a mathematician here, Nate, but I can add and subtract a little bit, is that you're going, all right, the play clock is 40 seconds, so it, even if you don't convert the first down with Pomona Pitzer, as long as you keep the ball within the field of play, you get another 40 seconds off the play clock before you actually have to snap the ball on fourth down. Now the clock does stop on the change of possession if you don't convert on fourth down, but at that point, you're looking at the Leopards only having roughly probably about 30 seconds to score twice. Again, a minute 21 on the clock here. Third down for the Sage Hens and about two to go. This play here likely will decide whether or not the Leopards get the ball back. If they do, like Caesar said, it's a matter of how, how much time they'll have. Russo lets the pressure come to him. Good coverage there by the Leopards. Now I'm I'm absolutely mystified on the play call right now at, with third and one and a half why you throw the football because this is exactly what happens to Pomona Pitzer. The ball is incomplete. The clock stops with 117 left. 
And now the Sage Hens have to make a decision. Do we go for it on fourth down? And again, if you don't convert, the clock stops on the change of possession. Jamar do, Brown in coverage there for the Leopards. Go ahead, Caesar. finish. I, I was just going to say, or do you try to kick a field goal? Regardless, the, the clock stops. If you miss it, the clock stops on change of possession. Now you got a lot of wind behind you, and your, kick, your place kicker, number 36, Cameron uh, Saranji is plenty of foot to make plenty that. of foot. He's shown that he's got a big leg, so they might go for it. We'll see. Ball spotted at the 30 makes it how long? About 40, a 40 yard field so goal. So you here. go, what you do here is the ball's on the 30, you add seven yards to the to the spot of the ball for the hold, and then you add another 10 for right. the end zone. So you're looking at about 47 yards from here. Right on. So Saranji will have a tall task ahead of him if he's Asked to get this field goal up and through the uprights. Looking at the Seichens coming out. Sharanji leading the pack, wearing number 36. So regardless right now, we're looking at a two-possession game. Excuse me, you're looking at a two-possession game, a touchdown and a field goal to tie. If he kicks this, now you're still looking at a two-possession game, but it just changes from a touchdown and a field goal to two touchdowns. Sharanji looking to make the 47 yarder. With the help of the win, that one is up and good. Through the uprights for Pomona Pitzer's kicker. The senior, perfect on this Saturday afternoon, makes it Seychans 20, Leopard 7. What a wonderful kick. This kid's got a leg that does not quit. He could have probably added another 20, 25 yards at the back end of that thing, and that was a 47 yard kick. Now, granted, there's a lot of wind blowing, but you have to account for that, that you don't push the thing right or left. Shot that one a little left, but through the uprights, a minute and 11 seconds for the Leopards. And so what the Leopards have to do right now is it goes from being, like I said earlier, a touchdown and a field goal to tie to two touchdowns. So the first thing is they got to get a touchdown. Going against the wind, going to be a little difficult going vertical right now because that ball is blowing north by northeast right now by the look of the flag. Noah Allen back to receive the kick alongside number 80, Justin Brown. Allen will watch it skip into the end zone and out for a touchback. Still 1-11 on the clock. And I'm going to compliment number four, Mr. Allen, on that one. That is a very heads up play. I'm sure he was tempted to catch that ball off the bounce, but he saw that thing coming in hot. It was going to bounce to and through the end zone. And instead of trying to risk it and not get that ball outside the 25 yard line and wasting valuable clock time, he let that thing roll. So now the clock didn't run and you get the ball on the 25 yard line. Trevor Tedesco managed to get on the board on their last drive. The Sage Hens defense looking to keep this score where it is at 20 to seven. Tedesco. Moving on the run to his right, flips it over to the Leopards' sideline, caught by someone on the bench, incomplete. And that's actually a pretty great call right there because they're moving the pocket, so Tedesco can either throw the ball out of bounds, not risk intentional grounding. He can run out of bounds, which would stop the clock. You don't have to burn a timeout. And that's at the worst case scenario, which is exactly what just happened. Second down and 10. Ball is spotted at the 25-yard line. Tedesco to Rumsey, caught with two hands, down short of the first. And that's just a, a, a freshman mistake right there. Rumsey needs to get out of bounds right now to stop the clock. He tried to pick up an extra yard or two, but that extra yard or two doesn't do you any good right now if you run out of clock. Clock now at 40 seconds. Tedesco takes the snap, has space up in the middle. Quickly, it empties. Number 44 picking up the sack for Pomona Pitzer. And the Leopards going to have to sprint back to the line of scrimmage right now to try to get a playoff. It's fourth down. It doesn't really matter. There's only 30 seconds or 21 seconds left in the ball game here. And I bet it must have been mistaken because Coach Creek would have used the timeout by now if they still had it. To Lee Cobb, Pomona native from right next door. Diamond Ranch High School. Picking up the sack, yes indeed, Diamond Ranch graduate. Trevor Tedesco, gonna let it air out here. He's got Noah Allen. He's been picked 
That'll be the nail in the coffin here from Fort Myers Stadium on the last play of the game. Trevor Tedesco gets picked off. The Seychens cruise to a 20 to seven victory behind the leg of Cameron Sharanji and the other legs of the Wimmer brothers, both Quentin and Sander. And that was one heck of a pick. Thought for a quick second there might be a shot at making a play, but again, there was no time left on the clock anyhow. So regardless, they weren't gonna get to the end zone. It could have been an outstanding grab, but instead, great, it was an outstanding grab. It just was for the defense and not the offense on that given play. Pass was intended for the freshman Noah Allen. Tedesco moving on his feet throughout the game. Had a strong showing, but this Pomona Pitzer defense came out and locked down these Leopards, holding them to one fourth quarter touchdown. A seven yard pass from Tedesco to Jimmy Rumsey, the freshman receiver's second touchdown of the season, marking Laverne's only score. Max Jimenez had a perfect point after, but Cameron Sharanji, the kicker for the Sagehens, was Caesars player of the game, certainly had a strong showing, putting the Sagehens in great field position and managing two fourth quarter field goals there at the end. I'll tell you what though, it, this is a, a lot better showing for the Leopards than the first time they played the Sage Hens at Pomona. So the last time they played, it was 34 to seven, and it just, it didn't even feel really that close. The, ones, the seven points was from the defense on the very first play from the line of scrimmage, the last time they played. And this time, what I'll say is that you're seeing some sort of movement moving in that, in a better direction right now. Still not able to put enough great plays together to score points. Still not enough necessarily to keep them out of the end, the other team out of the end zone. But the Leopards right now are starting to move in a positive direction. They've hit the injury bug, so a lot of different young guys are playing right now. They're getting valuable reps, valuable experience, and they're still being very competitive. A lot of grit to this team. Love what Coach Creek is still trying to accomplish every day. There's no quit in these gentlemen. Um, my hat goes off to the Sageheads. Great game by them. They really gutted this thing out. That Sometimes it doesn't have to be pretty. It's just got to be effective. Their coach is probably over there saying they wanted it to be a little bit more pretty, but you know what? That's a still a good, solid win for the Sageheads today. Coach Creek's Leopards fall to 1-6 and six on the season, 0-5 oh in Skyak play. They'll line up next Thursday at the University of Redlands. Excuse me, that'll be next. Saturday. For the Pomona Pitzer Sagehens, improving to 3-2 and two on the season, 4-3 and three overall. From Nate Rodriguez, Cesar Rivas, the entire LVTV crew, you were watching Saturday afternoon Skyac football on LVTV 3, Sagehens 20, Leopard 7.